executive meeting of February 25th, 2019. We are in the Cardinal Room. It is 7.01. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, we will begin asking everybody to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ms. Clegg, proud principal of Jarrettown, will you lead us, please? Ms. Place, I mean. Ms. Place. Ms. Clegg. I, I, you, 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 didn't, you didn't hear? You switched. You switched. Thank you, Ms. Place, principal, proud principal of Jarrettown Elementary School, the home of the dragons. Okay, we move on to a roll call, please, Ms. Evans. Mrs. Francek. Here. Mrs. Good. Here. Dr. Kim. Here. Dr. Ludwig. Mr. Ropsky. Here. Mrs. Rothman. Mrs. Sherpier. Here. Mr. Sirota. Dr. Levinowitz. Here. All present. Okay, all present. And Mr. Sirota, I believe you need to leave at around 7.30? Yes, I'll be going across the street to the zoning hearing board meeting uh, for, uh, where Sandy Run is on the agenda at, or just before, I'll leave just before 7.30 and I will come back as soon as I'm no longer needed over there. Okay. Thank you, sir. And I'd just like to welcome everyone. I see there's some new faces uh, in, in our audience tonight. Uh, this is a legislative meeting of the board. Uh, the formal meeting, you'll see the agenda in the handouts. We have a, uh, a welcome from uh, myself, from our student government association report. Dr. Yanni will have a, a very detailed superintendent's report tonight. We have one presentation, and then we move on to community input. And as per our policy, the uh, community input, first community input is limited to uh, action items and presentations included on this uh, agenda only. Uh, just one announcement I have, and that is uh, this coming Sunday, March 3rd, is the open house at Eastern. Everyone is invited. There's a, some extra copies of the brochure that is in the back of the room. And uh, Eastern is our current technical center. There's eight districts that send students, 11th and 12th grade, to Eastern. At this time of year, we have our uh, 10th graders looking at the option of attending Eastern. We're very proud to state that um, on the brochure, Andrew Snell, which is a student at Upper Dublin High School, uh, won the uh, contest to, uh, to do the cover of the mailer that went to every home, every 10th grade home uh, in the eight school districts that, that do attend. So a big shout out to, uh, to Andrew. And we will now move on to uh, Mr. Oh, one other announcement is uh, I've been busy attending some of the swim meets and some basketball. Uh, we'd like to wish the girls basketball team best of luck. They play again on Tuesday and on Friday, and they're guaranteed a slot uh, in states. So we wish them the very best of luck on that. Last year, if you remember, they won the state championship. So uh, we are going in that direction again by losing the game last weekend which puts us into the losers category, but we still continue to play, and that's what happened last year. Also, our boys and girls swimming just finished. They completed. They won the uh, Suburban Conference. They will be moving on to districts on Friday and Saturday, and then states will be in a couple of weeks at uh, Bucknell University. Um, we will now move on to our Student Government Association report, uh, report Mr. Kaplan. Thank you, Dr. Levinowitz. I hope everyone has enjoyed the snow and the longer weekends. The students sure have, but are continuing to work hard despite the days off. This past Friday, the Student Government Association hosted its annual volleyball marathon in the gym. Fifteen teams of 12 people that raised over $300 each played volleyball from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. and donated, donated all the raised money to the Children's Hospital of Pennsylvania. Additionally, coming up is the first annual Family Feud on March 10th, four teams of six, one, one representing each grade, will participate in a game based off the TV show Family Feud, and the winning team will get to donate all the money raised to a charity of their choice. As for the arts department, this Thursday is the Music in Our Schools Month choral concert, where the choirs from all the Upper Dublin schools will be performing songs from TV shows. 
In other news, the Upper Dublin, Dublin Ski Club hosted its annual blood drive on February 13th, where UD teachers and students alike donated a total of 87 pints of blood. Also, this past Friday in the cafeteria, there was a wonderful event celebrating Black History Month. Also, this past weekend, a number of our high school and middle school students attended the Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Junior Academy of Science Region 1 Science Fair at Souderton Area High School. Many of these students ended up winning awards and are invited to in attend the state competition at Penn State University this May. As for, us, as for athletics, as Dr. Levinowitz said, the girls' basketball team, which is now 20-5, and five, have a playoff game tomorrow night against Dowington East High School. All winter sports seasons are starting to come to a close, while spring sports will be beginning March 4th. During these upcoming weeks, students will be finalizing their course selections for next year. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. We will now turn, uh, move on to a superintendent's report, Dr. Yanni. Thank you, Dr. Levinowitz. It's good to see everyone tonight. Um, in terms of state funding, Governor Wolf has presented his version of the state budget, which calls for a modest increase in school funding. Between now and June 30th, hopefully by June 30th, we will know uh, some definitive numbers from the state. Uh, we are working with politicians on both sides of the aisle to ensure that the um, modest increase in state funding remains through the budget process. Among the notable changes that we may see, um, there is pending legislation to drastically reduce the cost of charter school tuition. Um, Upper Dublin School District uh, pays approximately $300,000 a year in charter school tuition, and we're hoping um, that we will be able to attract some of our students back to the district. At our last education committee meeting, we talked about the issue of adolescent sleepiness. Across the nation, there have been news stories and pushes to analyze school start times, specifically at the high school level. During our last education committee meeting, we talked about using a sleep questionnaire from the University of Cleveland. And uh, this week and a little bit into next week, we'll be uh, surveying our students in grades 5 through 12. And our survey results will be presented at the next education committee meeting, which is on Monday, March 11th. As many of you know, the district has taken a step into per uh, personalized learning. Um, our district has been accepted into the first cohort of education elements and Google, uh, Google's personalized learning design academy, uh, designed for smaller school districts who are ready to take the next leap into personalized learning and progress with our goals. We will have access to a team of experts uh, for uh, a minimal cost to the district, so we're excited about that. If you watched my Monday morning messages this morning, there was information in uh, that short video about some of the concerns expressed by the community regarding the consent decree, which was the result of uh, settled litigation at the federal level. Uh, most of the ire that has been drawn is about the idea of restricted outside activities. Uh, while this is included in the consent decree, um, almost the entirety of the middle school site will be a construction zone. And that is truly the reason uh, that outdoor activity is being uh, restricted. In terms of the new Sandy Run Middle School, uh, currently the project stands at just over $75 million. The cost has been increased by some of the things outside of our, uh, outside of our control. Uh, specifically, $465,000 um, we've seen an increase in that amount for offsite road improvements required by the township, and another $500,000, uh, which is a premium for four underground retention basins uh, that are required uh, due to building the new building. Again, neither of those issues are under the district's control, but we're working with the township to see how we can mitigate some of those costs. The district also saw a $900,000 increase for site restraints phasing and for the significant amount of dirt that needs to be hauled away from the site. Grading required to maximize field space has added $270,000 to the project's cost. Um, please stay tuned to uh, the district website and need notification. The board will be holding its first town hall meeting to discuss issues around Sandy Run Middle School on Tuesday, March 19th, and that will be held right at Sandy Run. 
Across the district, or I'm sorry, across the state districts have implemented Safe to Say, which is an anonymous tip line that students can access outside of school hours uh, to discuss uh, serious concerns um, that they have either about themselves or if they have a friend that they uh, perceive to be in danger. Um, across, the, across the state, calls are coming in at all hours of the day. We have uh, so far had uh, three calls and we were able to assist students through uh, various issues outside of the school day. I'd like to thank Kim Schuler, Assistant Principal and Safety Coordinator for her leadership with Safe to Say in Upper Dublin. As Daniel mentioned last Friday night, um, we celebrated Black History Month with a celebration uh, here at the high school. It was well attended. And a few weeks ago, uh, our Chinese American subgroup of our Excellence and Equity Committee uh, hosted a Lunar New Year celebration. Both of these celebrations were great uh, reminders and representations of the various cultures we have in Upper Dublin. And finally, um, we've started the process of strategic action planning. Uh, we had our kickoff strategic action planning meeting a couple of weeks ago. We had about 75 community members, staff members, board members, and administrators in attendance uh, to review the areas that we're looking at are teaching and learning, technology, engagement, facilities and operations, human resources, and budget and finance. Uh, we thank all of our uh, participants for being part of this process. Um, and even though I did mention it last month, her resignation or her retirement is on the board agenda for tonight. Uh, we congratulate Kathy Smythe, our elementary assistant principal and reading coordinator, for um, a long and successful career here in Upper Dublin. And we'll miss her as she uh, moves on to retirement this summer. And that concludes my report. Okay, thank you, Dr. Yanni. Uh, moving on. To our presentation tonight, there's one presentation. It is on the 2019-2020 expenditure budget part one. Uh, Ms. Brenda Jones Bray, our business manager, will be uh, doing the presentation. Thank you for that introduction. Um, tonight, as Dr. Olivenowitz already stated, we'll be looking at expenditures. Last month, we looked at uh, revenues for Upper Dublin. And we're only going to be looking at 37.5% of expenditures tonight, but let's get started. During the month of February, we had a finance committee meeting last uh, Thursday night. We uh, had a transportation budget presentation for the first time by our director of uh, transportation. We also had someone uh, from the third party administrator. Uh, Mr. Bob Russell, come and speak to us about the BMCS Healthcare Consortium um, to talk to us about our medical and prescription experience. And again, tonight we're going to be looking at things in a much higher level than what we did last Thursday night uh, as we talk about certain functions within the budget. We also have budget uh, discussions. We continue with a leadership team. Um, at bi-weekly, uh, regularly scheduled meetings, and staffing meetings uh, started actually this morning as we met with the elementary principals uh, at Cabinet. And looking forward to March, uh, we will also be having Gallagher and Company uh, come in and review our experience for healthcare um, on a, a different level. Um, they take a more objective and a look as to in, uh, our expenditures and our experience and perhaps to make some suggestions for what we can do for long-term planning. Next month, we'll be looking at um, both at the Finance Committee and then, at a, again, a more topside view at the legislative meeting, the balance of our expenditures um, in detail, about 67%, or excuse me, 62.5%. And to anyone in the audience or listening at home, something I'd like to remind you, if you are a new homeowner or within the last year have um, moved, um, you need to file, or if you want to receive and be part of the uh, homestead application and have property tax uh, reduction and application with uh, Montgomery County Assessor's Office. That needs to be done by March 31st. April, we will continue with uh, discussing budget at Finance Committee, at Legislative Committee, and there are several important things that happen during April. We'll talk about those more in depth, that is, at the state level. And May, um, PD will notify the school district of um, several uh, bits of information, one being 
uh, how many people or how many residences qualify for um, property tax uh, relief under uh, the act from two th of 2006. Uh, Finance Committee will discuss a, a budget update and at that time we'll talk about transferring money to other funds from the general fund. May 20th at the legislative meeting, the board will take action on the proposed um, final budget, which is required um, under school code. And then lastly in June, we have a number of activities. Um, we have to advertise the budget and we have a deadline um, of June 14th to do that because we're expecting final budget to be approved on June 24th. And then after that happens, the business office has to file quite a bit of information with DCED as well as BDE. And with that, we'll start talking about numbers. Um, we're going to take a look back just for a second for everyone in the audience. Um, as of June 30th, um, 2018, we had an uncommitted fund balance of approximately $7.2 million. Um, in, in addition to that amount, we have about $960,000 that's committed within the general fund budget for assessment appeals and approximately 2.1 for what's referred to as a rate stabilization. So on the screen in front of you, you'll notice about that the total of 7.2 does not include the 3.6 of committed fund balance for assessment appeals and rate stabilization. Looking ahead to 2019, we start with that amount but we're estimating total revenue to be nearly $101 million and total expenditures to be close to $100.5 million. And then fund transfers um, that have taken place will land us at a projected uncommitted ending fund balance at June of five point, nearly $5.2 million. Um, fund transfers, again, that's money that goes from the general fund and is transferred into usually the capital fund um, or the debt service fund. And what we usually do is take money that is one-time revenue. Uh, it's not reoccurring revenue that comes into the district, such as large uh, real estate transfer tax amounts um, or um, something from um, positive assessment appeals where we have interim taxes that are uh, large in nature, and we transfer for those to the capital fund to make improvement to uh, our capital assets throughout the district that would be buildings. Trying to look further with a crystal ball into the future, looking at uh, estimated fund balance at the end of 2019-20, and this number is conservative always. We start with last year, or what the number we just projected at 5.188, or nearly $5.2 million. Total revenue, which we discussed on January 28th, is currently expected to be $103 million, and total expenditures at this time $104,786,000. Right now, we're budgeting fund transfers of $2 million, which is slightly less than what we um, have for the current year, but uh, that's a number that could easily be changed, and we would end the year 1920 on June 30th, 2020 with $1.4 million uncommitted. That's assuming we don't make any changes. There would still be $3.6 million in committed funds for assessment appeals and the rate stabilization plan as um, earlier discussed. Expenditures. So we've heard of retirement already this evening. That's not been factored into the budget at this point in time. No retirements have been. We hope to be hearing about those more so in the near future. Um, you will see and know that the PEASERS rate, that's the retirement rate, um, has, will increase from 33.43% to 34.29%. Now we have factored in medical insurance rate at about 9% and prescription increase of 9% a budgetary reserve of $250,000, and uh, we're still, as I mentioned, a capital project transfer of $2 million, plus new debt for Sandy Run Middle School of $1 million. We're going to talk about those amounts in more detail, not only tonight, but also at our March 21st um, Finance Committee, where PFM will be coming 
to talk to us about our planning for our debt next steps for Sandy Run. Um, usually by this time, we would probably have our second look for our medical insurance and our Rx. Uh, last Thursday night, when the gentleman was here from the consortium, they had just that very day um, elected to hire or to go with a different company for Rx. And the good news was, is that they expect to save about $15 million for all the districts in the consortium, um, but that is slowing down the recalculation of the second look. So I don't have that to announce tonight but we'll know that amount very shortly. And then usually by March 31st, we'll have the third look moving forward for the next budget year, in this case, 1920. So retirements, we expect to know much more about those within the next couple of weeks. Again, Sandy Wren and fund transfers, we'll be talking about quite a bit during March. And throughout this process, because there's a lot of numbers and moving parts, in the business office, we continue to update estimates and make changes to the projections. The next two slides are just the preliminary budget put together as um, listed by function, which is a term and a way that we have to do it for PDE. Um, so mainly what you want to look at um, would be the total expenditures listed here of $106,786, and excuse me, $106,786,316. This shot is only to show what we discussed extensively at last Thursday's Finance Committee meeting. And if you'd like to know more about each of the functions that's being presented tonight, um, certainly go and look at that uh, YouTube and you will see uh, that conversation, and also you can uh, go into each one of these functions to learn information about how many employees we have and the various um, objects and the various amounts within each of the functions. And as I said earlier, we're looking at 37.5, I may have said 32.5, but we're look looking at nearly 40% of um, the expenditure budget this evening. Um, vocational education through budgetary reserve, a number of the items at the end are um, together under the debt function. And what we don't discuss tonight, I'll call them the meteor group or the meteor functions, the 1100 and 1200 and 2300s will be covered at our next uh, legislative meeting in March. Dr. Levinowitz mentioned uh, Eastern earlier in his presentation. And note that as we compare 1819 um, budget versus estimate, there's no change. That's the number that's voted on very early. So we're not expecting any deviation in um, that dollar amount um, for the current year. Um, 1400s is other instruction, and that's for functions such as summer school. Um, we had a reduction this year for um, the actual expenditures on those areas, so we saved some money, um, about $29,000. Adult education, we had a, a small um, variance just related to um, adult evening school uh, presenters. I have to smile. I don't know that I've ever seen a board member walk out on one of my budget presentations before. <laughs> <clears throat> um, the 2100 function. You'll notice some variances. Uh, I just want to call your attention to some of the changes that happened between the 2111 pupil services function, the 2120, and the 2140 uh, guidance services and psychological services. Um, and I mentioned earlier that there were estimates that we often, not oftentimes, but we find mistakes as we refine and go through uh, things. So when we were looking at, when Ms. Baldassano and I were looking in, and analyzing these numbers in this particular slide, we found that uh, we had some additional budget added for retired employees. So these numbers are a little bit um, too high. Too much was added. So you will see uh, some changes in these numbers as we move forward. Um, but still, overall, when you consider the percentage variances, and particularly when you look at the total expenses, $92,000, a 
the variance is about 2.4 percent on the estimate for the current year. Also should be noted under the 2140, it wasn't just um, a benefit um, included twice. Uh, we need some additional supplies for our school psychologists under that area. I believe it was about less than $10,000, but there were some changes that were made in that area. And by the way, this function was presented in detail with the exception of salaries and benefits by Ms. Clegg, uh, I believe in November at uh, Finance Committee meeting. So the 2200s function is um, curriculum primarily and technology. Again, these um, sub-budgets uh, Dr. Miner presented, I believe, last month, and Mr. V, I don't know if it was last month or in December. I think you talked about your budget in December to uh, the Finance Committee. Um, Notice that we are very close to what we expected to spend, again, as far as percentages are concerned. Um, the increase this year has to do with the um, equipment purchased for, uh, I believe, the high school and some wireless access points, but um, still within a relatively decent margin of error. At the library, most of the variance that you will note there for total uh, of the $60,000 had to do with um, who was sitting in positions last year. And what do I mean by that? Well, sometimes teachers go on sabbatical, or, the, or teachers or other people are out for family medical leaves. And when that occurs, we uh, have to obviously staff those positions as well as incur some salary costs as, and double benefits, perhaps, for those. So that's the reason why you see a $60,000 variance for library services. Um, and for 20, uh, that, and that happened, all of those things went into the budget number of $1.3 million, $1,313,000. One Everyone came back, they're well, and um, so we had some additional costs for this year since we were basing our um, budget numbers on long-term sub. Curriculum development. We actually spent less money on uh, curriculum development, but that had to do primarily with um, writing. The salary figure under 2260 is down about $5,000. Again, not a great deal for the area. And staff development um, is down significantly. Um, that has to do with everything in 2270s is the amount paid for tuition reimbursement when teachers um, take classes for advancement on the salary scale. We have a number of our teachers. On January 28th, Mr. Sigafus and I had a presentation, and a large percentage of our teachers are at um, Master's 30. And so the number of folks taking courses this year is less than what we budgeted uh, last year, when we were getting ready for this year. Pupil health, again, this is Mrs. Clegg. Um, but we had some um, nurses contracted sub expense was less than budgeted um, as far as the $26,000 is concerned, the 3% variance there. Under the business office, we actually um, have savings in medical for, for one uh, employee um, who doesn't take benefits, and that was a change for our, our, the business office. Um, so there were savings there primarily for that one reason. Operations. Well, we have savings in a lot of accounts across operations. Part of that is because of the attention and what we're doing in capital projects and the amount of time and the expenditures that are coming out of uh, capital projects, whether it be for money that we've transferred for repairs to the other schools or the work on Sandy Run Middle School. Um, that number is going to change, at least the total. Well, by not a great deal, when you consider the variance I'm discussing is $328,000, excuse me, $327,000. But we've had some snow days, and we've had some issues, um, that some overtime, and we'll, there will be some changes coming up in operation. Um, we also have 
building and repairs, and you're going to hear this a couple of times. Dr. Yanni mentioned a uh, consent decree, and uh, we have a number of things that we need to do with that. So we may not have all of those costs built in to the operations budget at this point in time, but uh, we're, we'll be watching operations again very closely. And transportation, as I indicated, Mr. Robbins was here last Thursday, and we discussed that. And the major savings on transportation has to do with the fact we were able to take a lot of the work and the runs back in to district this year. So we aren't doing so much collaboration with Springfield. We're not using Riders Club, which went out of business. Um, so while the lower por portion, the uh, objects 300, 400, and on down may decrease, we may be looking at, and we have to take a very careful look at, our salary lines because we've had uh, a number of folks working more overtime due to not only bringing the runs back to uh, district run, but also due to um, family medical leave or medical issues. Again, what that entails is um, we have to pay for sick days and as well as paying for the substitutes that do the work. So overall, on 15.9, we've got a variance on this particular page of about 3.5%, but that's a half a million dollars. Community services, um, a relatively small budget. It has to do with um, items that provide services for the community, such as the swimming pool, related to um, what occurs there. And uh, we also have, um, which we discussed again Thursday night, $46,000 in this particular function that relates to North Hills. And you'll actually even see that on um, the agenda tonight for board approval. But a relatively small amount, uh, again, looking at the current year. For all of you in the audience who aren't familiar with these um, reviews, we're just looking at the current year, and then we're going to talk about the budget in just a few minutes. So anyway, lastly, while we look at this year, we have debt service, uh, a minor change from budget, fund transfers. We budgeted $1.4 million, which is consistent with what we've been doing since we had some debt extinguish or fall off a few years ago in preparation for Sandy Run and other capital projects um, that we transferred. And um, we also had some savings um, in this particular area that we transferred because our debt payment for Sandy Run Middle School for the first $10 million was less than we had budgeted and thought. Um, and then budgetary reserve, that's just an amount in our um, general fund in case we have some emergency or that we can't cover in some other areas. Um, and we need to have that a little bit of wiggle room within our budget because um, we don't want to exceed our total budget ever. It's a problem with PDE and it would be an audit finding if you exceed the amount of the approved budget. So we have a little bit of breathing room due to that $250,000. And oftentimes we end up transferring that or recommending the board transfer that to um, the capital fund or um, um, the amount just ends up in fund balance. As I told you, we've just gone through budget versus expense for the current year. Now we're going to look at budget versus budget. The VOTEC, we're down a little bit for next year. That's a formula-driven amount. And uh, our enrollment is down um, at uh, Eastern for next year. So that's the primary reason compared to, as the formula would indicate, uh, in comparison to the other district. Other instruction, we're anticipating a decrease in salaries for uh, the program administrators and teachers in summer school, and $319 is just a very small amount. Uh, looking at some course offerings, again, for adult education. Pupil services, uh, overall for the area of pupil services guidance and um, the psychologist, we will see very little change, $10,000 on $3.8 million, or 0.3 tenths of, um, of a percentage. 
again, moving forward to technology and library services, curriculum and staff development, um, we see an uptick of um, $53,621. We have in technology an increase in supplies and equipment. Uh, library would be increase in salaries and benefits. Uh, again, I spent some time talking about this before the number was too low for 18 and 19 due to the many personnel changes and flexibility. So you see that that will increase $119,000 for next year. Uh, curriculum development. Um, Dr. Miner brought us good news with that when she was presenting the budget. It's down about $72,000 over um, the previous year. And staff development um, has to do with, again, the reduction in the tuition reimbursement that I was talking about earlier. Pupil health, very small increase in, in that area that has to do primarily with salary and, and benefits as PEASERS. Business office, a small percentage, again, related to um, salary and benefits. Operations of $100,000 uh, increase in salary and benefits for the positions um, that are in that area. Some professional services. We actually are reducing uh, building repairs because of the work that's being done at Sandy Run. We're reducing the work, uh, the amount in the budget, uh, the general fund budget. And in, uh, we have some increase in electricity, um, primarily because of uh, air conditioning Maple Glen. Um, we also see some um, moving on to transportation. Uh, we are planning on decreasing um, our contract and, and joint venture or joint agreement with Springfield Township School District on transportation. Uh, that will be for a reduced amount next year. And support services is related to salaries and benefits, and then also an increase for software uh, for frontline tech, um, frontline technology applicant tracking used in HR. And lastly, we have other support, and that's the MCIU member services budget, which will be voted on tonight under the Finance Committee agenda, um, and that's a, a very small amount of only $67,000. Community services, only $679 total in uh, change in total, and that is just for salaries and FICA. There are very few, if any, employees under Function 3300 that we have to pay fee PEASERS or the retirement amount on. 5,000 function and budget versus budget. We have the debt service, um, which is going up uh, for debt service, $321,000. But that includes what we're expecting for Sandy Run. Again, we'll have more information and an adjustment on that. If we only borrow um, $10 million, bank qualified uh, amount again, that number will go down, uh, decrease. And fund transfers, um, we'll continue to discuss that. Will it be $2 million as we move forward, um, or will we land on another amount for fund transfers before the budget is finalized? And once again, I spoke about the budgetary reserve and the $250,000, a quarter of a million dollars, um, just in case budget. which $250,000 on a $106 million budget is a very, very small percentage. Um, but we have other funds that um, make us comfortable with a relatively modest amount within the general fund. Looking at our next meeting on March the 25th, we're going to cover 62.5% of the expenditure budget. We're looking at function 1100, which is called regular education. That's the largest single function within the budget. Uh, and we'll be also be looking at special education. So that will be the focus in, again, 2300s, which covers costs related to principals' budgets, um, as well as the board budget, tax collector, and a few other items within, um, well, superintendent's budget as well under 2360. A lot of information, a good deal of numbers which will be posted, in fact it is um, currently under board docs, but will be posted to the website. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, questions from the board? Okay. Ms. Rothman. Thank you. Um, I think, Brenda, at the outset, you talked about um, the $7.2 million that we have in uncommitted, um, as well as the money that we have in the rate stabilization fund and um, in the uh, assessments. Um, and then I think you talked about, uh, as debt service here at the end, uh, the money that we had in what was our debt service account plus the bond fund from 2018. Um, we also have a capital projects fund, is that correct? Absolutely. Okay, and so that wasn't in the, the amount, I know it's in our paperwork. No. Okay. And that's got about $5 million in that still? Uh, yes, okay. approximately, as well as the debt service fund. Right. Which is also um, on the agenda for approval tonight, uh, again, under the Treasurer's report. All of those amounts are Those amounts there. always appear in the Treasurer's report? Right. every month. Yeah. On, on paper and online. Any other questions from the board? I would just like to say that when you look at um, the gap between revenues and expenditures for next year, if you take away the fund transfers, um, the gap is not is not unsurmountable, insurmountable. And I think um, that's a real credit not only to uh, Ms. Bray and Ms. Baldassano, but um, all of the administrators that control um, their individual budgets and also to our staff who really worked um, to prioritize needs for next year as we uh, did our first rounds of first round of needs based budgeting. Okay, thank you. I, I just wanted to reiterate for the community that uh, we moved our legislative meetings to the end of the month, which makes uh, a lot of sense uh, because our committee meetings that we reference is where the work of the board really takes place. The legislative meetings where we vote and all the items that were discussed in detail at the committee meetings. We have policy committee meeting early in the month, we have education, and we have operations and finance. And we went into, into much greater detail <laughs> than we did tonight uh, at our finance committee meeting and at the operation committee meeting. So when you see this meeting progress, there won't be that much discussion because all the discussion occurred at the committee levels and we we're just taking care of the business of the board tonight. Uh, I just wanted to add that reminder. Okay, uh, thank you, Ms. Ms. Bray. We are up to the uh, part in the agenda, which is for community input. I'd like to remind the community that in the first community input, uh, your community input is limited to action items and questions regarding the presentation that was made tonight. Uh, our community input is limited to four minutes. Uh, step up to the podium, please state your name and where you reside in the township. Okay, we will open it up now. And I'm imagining that there will be some community input, so please, if we can just, the next one or two people can step up to the podium so there isn't always a pause. So it's, it, come on up. I need a breast report, Washington. I literally was gonna take a break. <laughs> I can't stand no community input. So let me, let me just focus on the planetarium. Many, many times at many meetings, um, residents had concerns and asked many times, is the planetarium going to be included? And the answer was always, oh yes, yes, we plan to include it. And now it looks like we maybe can't afford it. Also many times, community members, residents, taxpayers had raised many, many concerns about whether the Sandy Run project was even affordable. Um, there were concerns that the committee that, that had been formed to look into the whole Sandy Run project asked for a long-term capital expense project and did not recommend going, afford, going forward with Sandy Run until that was done, and that is not done. So I have a couple specifics, or just questions. One is, what does the project cost if you can, if it turns out that you can still afford it, what is the total cost of that project? Meaning everything, the construction, and then everything that needs to be in the planetarium. That's a question for you to answer after community input. Looks like it's gonna be short. And I just, I just have a real problem with, the. to me, I, you know, it just seems like how could all nine board members 
basically reassure the community that the planetarium was going to be in there. And now here we are, and we're still at the very beginning of this Sandy Run project. And that's a pretty major thing that looks like it may not be in there. And that's why you're taking the deduct. You want to make sure that's written up for the deduct alternate bid in case you have to deduct it out. I mean, that, I don't, that, that to me just lessens the trust that I see here. And the other thing is there's an old saying that applies to school board almost every single meeting. The devil is in the details. And you go forward with a project like Candy Run Middle School and you tell everybody it's going to be so much better, so much better. And then we get into it and, well, by the way, you might lose the planetarium, which is important to a lot of people. There is a whole curriculum built, built around the, the planetarium, has been for many, many years. So to me, it's a bait and switch, and I don't appreciate it. Um, Bill Swan from uh, Glenside, Dr. Levinowitz, members of the board, uh, Dr. Yanni. Uh, sorry, I dragged myself in here a little late. I was helping my uh, nephew, Jacob. He's a third grader at uh, Thomas Fitzwater uh, with his regular versus irregular polygons. And I asked them, uh, because I heard what the, the subject was going to be, I asked them, have you ever seen the uh, the planetarium? No. I said, well, yeah, there there is one at uh, Sandy Run. They're going to be building a new Sandy Run. Uh, but now I found out that the new Sandy Run might not have the, the planetarium. And uh, I tried to get him to come along to, to, to speak uh, uh, on his own behalf, but, but he uh, trusted me to do it for him, that uh, he would like the same fullness of educational opportunity that, that his cousin, uh, my daughter, uh, has. Um, yeah, with the, the, the planetarium, uh, yes, it's a, it's a little niche. It, it's, it's, a, it's a specialty, and yeah, you know, we, we can you know balance uh, uh, budgets and uh, you know round a couple corners here. Uh, but but it's it's something unique that we have and other people don't have. Uh, you'll probably hear in a little while. I mean, we we do have uh, an astrophysicist on staff. Uh, and there's a whole branch of science that that uh, planetarium can feed, can develop, that cannot be you know, realistically done otherwise uh, with you know, uh, YouTube downloads or, or, or things like that. It's, it's a whole experience to it. Uh, yeah, well, I see that we're you know, a little close here in some places on the budget and well within margins on other places. Uh, on the right over here, I happened to catch a little blurb from uh, NPR on uh, KYW about uh, trying to improve uh, girls' participation in, in STEM programs and you know, the, the sciences and stuff like that. It's something everyone seems to, to, to agree upon is, is important. Uh, I, I don't know of anyone here that would you know, have you know, another opinion, although you know, they're welcome to it. However, uh, it's it would, it's a whole branch of uh, uh, scientific possibility that we'd be denying you know, the girls, the boys too, everyone, uh, simply by uh, removing it from uh, the the facility. Um, and uh, then I, I also remembered. Uh, I'll uh, finish it up with this. Last night, watching the Oscars, there was this uh, you know great commercial about uh, women in sports and their participation, stuff like that. And on the, on the same. Uh, a thought, you know, with uh, women in, in STEM subjects. Uh, you know, the bottom line of Nike's ad was, do it. So let's continue with the planetarium. Thank you. Good evening, board. My name is Ted Fricker. I am a resident in Dresher. I am a 93 alum, as well as having two daughters in Jarrettown, overseen by Mrs. Place, is doing a great job. Um, wanted to say that there's a community event on March 1st at the planetarium. Bring your kids. I heard that there are some of your children. I mean, I've seen them before, your nieces and nephews, so please bring them to that. A couple things I, I appreciate Dr. Yanni's report. Um, just curious, I, in my line of work, when we go over budget before we break ground, that's a concern. Um, I hear we're $2 million over budget already. Who's accountable? I mean, where, where is the accountability on the budgeting for this? It, it seems to me that, you know, without a shovel in the ground, we're talking over $2 million. That's a concern that we Someone's not doing their homework right. 
someone's not putting in the effort when they're putting the budget out there, we have to hold these, these contractors to the district accountable for those numbers. Um, the consent decree, I have a daughter who's going into middle school next year, so I hear that she's going to be three years in a building. That, to me, is a concern. don't know how we, if we're doing the construction, don't have any outdoor space available, if that's the case. That's sort of disappointing to think that my daughter will be in that building for three years, and that, to me, is unacceptable. Um, okay. So I'd like to hear something about that. And then the planetarium. Um, I remember when I was a student in Upper Dublin how, how much fun to go into the planetarium was. Um, Art Pierce was the planetarium director back then. He did a great job. Um, I had his wife, uh, actually, uh, in fifth grade. Both great people, did an awesome job, and really got people interested. Uh, I know that it was built because of the space race. I think is a really cool concept, and I think it's really cool that we have it. I think it's really amazing how, how much use it gets. Um, my kids love it. They talk about it all the time. They talk about how great job Ms. Ms. Small does when they go over there. They enjoy, they learn, um, and I agree. It, it, it promotes the kids' thought processes in science. And I think when you see it on the screen, it makes such a difference. I attended the community input. I went to the walkthrough at Sandy Run, saw the condition it's in. I'm not going to talk about how it got there, but we all know where it is now. We know where we're going with Sandy Run. Questions were asked about the planetarium. Questions were very pointed. They wanted to make sure that the planetarium was staying. Everything we heard was the planetarium staying. See this on the docket for, for based upon a February 12th letter. Sort of seems like I'm under the cover of darkness. That's a big concern to me. It's a big concern to my family. I told my kids tonight the planetarium may not be there. They were shocked. They, they couldn't believe this district without a planetarium. It's such an important part of what we do. And I just feel it's odd to think that it's going to be pulled out like this um, because of we're, re, re, we're changing the roads. I mean, Upper Dublin is spending money on everything else. They can't help with the roads. So just I'd like to hear more about why this is coming up so quickly, how the thought process has changed, and how we can keep it in the budget because it needs to be there. Thank you. How you doing? My name is Edward Pavlik. I've been a resident of Drescher since 1983. I had four children go through K through 12 in this district and have always enjoyed living here. I've always been happy with the way things were done. But Friday that changed when I found out about this proposal to come up with a plan that didn't include the planetarium. When I first heard that the school was going to be built, and the planetarium was an issue. I got involved, that was over a year ago. I attended a meeting up at the administrative offices with the previous superintendent. And I went there to try and be a help to raising funds if it came to a budget issue for just the planetarium. Was assured that it wasn't an issue, didn't foresee it. And over this past year, I've never heard a word about the planetarium's got to go until Friday. Um, I was shocked that it got this late in the game. And although I, I understand that this is only a proposal to go ahead and have a plan drawn up that omits the planetarium, as far as I'm concerned, that's the first step to eliminating the planetarium. Because at that point, it will give you enough money to finish the school, most likely, without eliminating much else. Therefore, no effort will be done to eliminate anything else, because now we have the planetarium. And the planetarium, all four of my children, to this day, at least one go to every event that the planetarium comes. I've been doing them for, I think, 20 years. I've got my first first exposure to the planetarium at Cheltenham. They had a planetarium when I went there. Loved it then, and I've kept up with it ever since, and my children have continued with it. I, I object to a cost savings plan that eliminates the planetarium at all. And I think I speak for many residents of this township that believe we should not even be looking at the planetarium. We wouldn't consider eliminating the ball fields and the gymnasium. We wouldn't consider getting rid of the arts department. Why would we consider getting rid of a very important part of the science program in our district? Not only for us, but for the other communities that make use of it. It's a valuable asset that puts us ahead of everybody that surrounds us. 
And I don't think we should see it as an alternative. I think we should be looking at it as a necessity. And every effort should be made to keep the planetarium. Spending $18,000 on a single focused objective, I think, is a waste of money. If we want to put together a plan and look at all the alternatives, that's different. But the planetarium should still not be part of that program. So I would love to hear why we think this is our only option. And I don't think it should be an option. And I don't think I'm the only one that feels that. Thank you. Good evening. Julia Watt, Fort Washington. I'm a nine-year resident here and two students, two kids in the district, one coming next year. Um, as Ms. Bray reported in the budget, um, appreciate that detail that we will be renewing the contract for our bus depot next year. So thank you to Dr. Yanni and all the board members that heard our pleas. And I think that's coming from all those that signed our petition and all those who dedicated time and energy to keeping the field of dreams for now. Um, I'd like to also ask a question about, as um, Dr. Yanni mentioned in his report, about how we're looking at later start times for the middle school or high school. Um, I'd like to see how the survey and evaluation will value the increase of the use of Chromebooks in all of our students, as young as the little ones, um, all the academic pressure, the curriculum, online social pressure, et cetera. Um, this appears, appears to be a large factor impacting sleep in our generation that's coming up. So I wanted to see how these factors will also be valued in that survey. Um, Regarding Sandy Run, as I said, I have um, two kiddos, a fourth and sixth grader. They're going to be in, in the height of all this construction. As we know, with um, the heavy curriculum increase of technology, our kids crave that outdoor time. A few years ago, we fought for keeping second recess for our kids. While they only have a 25-minute recess break time, I know my son is not alone in shoving down his lunch or only eating two pieces to run outside to get that 20 minutes of basketball, running, just socializing with kids. Um, and while it may be short, it is physical activity during a rigorous day. And with the current breezeway and the outdoor recess, it really allows for them to be able to be successful. Um, just recently, students at the middle school are now using Chromebooks at lunch. So I'm wondering if this is what that recess lunch time will be looking like for the next three years for our students. Whether we agree if this is valuable or not to our kids, not once during the presentations of Sandy Run or the building designs was it announced that this outdoor time, including gym, outside gym, turkey trot, field trot, outside learning, um, would be eliminated. This is a huge problem that needs to be fixed. And while there are buses to bring kids to the facilities for field days and such, where is that in our budget? And how much more time are we going to be, how much more money are we going to be spending on that? Um, last year, as we sat during all the presentations and the beautiful buildings, we saw outdoor space, kids playing outside. Middle school is hard enough. Um, our kids are going to be sitting in trailers, less windows, less outside time. Um, so I'd like to know, during those presentations, we saw that there were going to be community inputs. I'm thankful for the one coming up, but I know that we're very far along the plans of Sandy Run, and I'm wondering where those town hall and community input uh, times, as we saw during the videos, during the architect uh, presentations, people gathering together, brainstorming ideas, and being creative as a community. Um, and now with this legal degree decree that we have, we're making Sandy Run ADA compliant. Um, there was a large group of us who questioned many times over and over about renovating Sandy Run, saving our school district and our taxpayers and our kids, all this um, that's going to be happening. And we were told that it can't be done. But now we're being told that Sandy Run is going to be ADA compliant within one year. Um, so considering all those concerns, um, how can we relook at this project moving forward? The cost is increasing more and more. Can we look back at renovating? Can we figure out how we can make this work at the very least? Please vote no tonight to save the planetarium because, um, and look not to vote on having an alternate um, building plan. Thank you.
I just would like to reiterate and remind those people in coming up to speak, please limit your, your <laughs> right, items right. to agenda only so we can get through the first community input. Our legislative part of the meeting should take anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes, then it will be open for any comments whatsoever. Some items that are being, being discussed tonight are, are not uh, on the agenda, nor were they part of the presentation. Ms. Vitella. Yeah, the timing's impeccable. Um, Ginny Vitella Ambler. Um, and I was at the, all that discussion about the policy. I was totally and completely against it because it, it limits um, community input, and not, certainly not me because I'm at every meeting from beginning to end, to, typically, unless there's a conflicting um, district event for my children. Um, I feel like it's Groundhog Day. As a member of the Sandy Run Project Review Committee, the one person who is in dissent of it, mostly primarily, not because I didn't want a shiny new building. Of course, who wouldn't? but because it cost too much money. And we couldn't afford the $70 million, which at the time was promised as the pie in the sky. Ah, we're not even gonna get close to that. We haven't even put a shovel in the ground and we're $5 million over. Um, the planetarium was a huge factor. We were promised at multiple meetings, multiple conversations, everything over and over and over again, that the planetarium was important. It was important to everybody and would not be gone. I went over that. So many times I can't even I can't even count them. Removing the planetarium removes an integral part of our education experience. With this new building, we were supposed to get more. We weren't supposed to have less. The planetarium is what we have now. We weren't supposed to walk away with something less. I know it'll be shinier and newer the building, but if not have a planetarium, that's something less. It's significant. Um, we're over budget which ties into why we're at this point where we have to discuss this. I know the auxiliary gym was already an alternate bid, which I'm against that as well. Um, but at least we knew that when we were going through the Sandy Run Project Review Committee and all those conversations. So we're $5 million over. And I'm wondering with our engineer, the one person we didn't actually go out on bid on, why he is not culpable for some of this. Because why did he not look into talk to our township, which I know he does work for, about what road work we'd need, what retention basins we'd need, or whatever, and the grading and everything else. We talked about this for a year and a half we've been talking about it. And now we're talking about eliminating the planetarium because we're $5 million over budget. I don't think this architect should get one more dime. That was the, one of the best conversations we had at one of these school board meetings because it went 5-4, and in five and a half years there's only been two votes, it didn't go 9-0, and that was one of them. And so this architect that was 5 4 so there was four people that this was not their favorite one, is now looking for another $20,000. I'll round up, because I know it'll be more. Everything is. Um, so I just don't know why he should get one more dime. The planetarium is not an option. It should not be. It should not be on the table, just like the other things as well. And we were promised something, and already, without a shovel in the ground, we're not getting it. Kim Small, Drescher resident and parent of three Upper Dublin students, also K-12 science coordinator and planetarium director. Over the last year, I've remained silent regarding the planetarium because I believe the district and the board were committed to building a new Sandy Run Middle School that would include a planetarium. No decision, no decision definitely to eliminate the planetarium is being made tonight. With that said, I would like to offer my perspective. The reality is a vote to amend the Breslin contract really means there is no longer a guarantee to include a planetarium in a new middle school which is a significant perspective, new perspective. So tonight I ask the Board of Directors to not approve an agreement with Breslin Architect for an additional $18,500 to redesign a new middle school with a deduct alternate bid for the elimination of the planetarium. Discussions regarding the future of the planetarium occurred over six months ago when the original and subsequently revised design plans were created. Public support was evident for the inclusion of the planetarium. I sat on the committee that recommended to the board to build a new school versus refurbish the existing structure. The belief throughout that process was to build new only if we were not taking away educational experiences for our students. And until four days ago, the community was reassured and guaranteed that the planetarium was safe. Over a year ago, funding through a possible donation for a new planetarium was presented, and at that time was premature because it came before the vote to build new versus refurbish. Ideas were discussed that included working with the Education Foundation for fundraising opportunities or seeking grants to help offset the cost of a new planetarium. None of the outside funding was pursued because the facility was considered safe. It was in the designs and it was financially committed to by the board. 
We have known for several months now that this project is over budget. There was time to revisit these ideas prior to last Thursday's operations meeting. Outside, fu outside funding opportunities still may exist, and I would ask that we work together to pursue these while keeping the commitment of a new planetarium versus spending additional money to design a new middle school without one. The position to amend the contract with Breslin to revise the middle school plans without a planetarium as a way to determine the actual cost of a planetarium seems unnecessary to me. The guts, the inside parts of the planetarium, are being quoted as costing approximately $515,000. Seeing as Breslin already knows this number, and I'm assuming is able to pr provide a pretty accurate estimate of cost per square footage, I do not see why we'd pay them additional funds for them to revise the plans unless the goal is to eliminate the planetarium. As K-12 science curriculum leader, I, like, I would like the opportunity in the future to present to the board and the public information as how the planetarium is used and connected to our curriculum. As a brief summary tonight, all grades K-8 science units have been backwards designed over the last five years, and many include the planetarium to deliver essential curriculum. Grades K-8 visit the planetarium anywhere from three to eight times a year for a variety of science lessons, such as day and night sky, why the Earth has seasons, the causes of the phases of the moon, and how the electromagnetic spectrum helps us learn our perspective of the universe and our place in it. Additionally, cross-curricular lessons and deeper, add deeper meaning and learning experiences for our students. For example, elementary music class teachers, elementary music classes teach students the folk song, Follow the Drinking Gourd, which is followed by a simulation in the planetarium that allows students to learn how the sky changes throughout the night and how certain stars and constellations help slaves navigate as part of the Underground Railroad. Middle school technology education classes learn about flight in the planetarium as part of their unit on rocket development, and middle school music classes experience Gustav Holtz the planets as a way to learn about our solar system. Beyond the impact that this facility has on our district, there are many other community groups that benefit. Chelton Nursery School, Village Schoolhouse, Perlman Jewish Day School, Philmont Christian, Christian Academy, Twin Spring Farms, Carmel Nursery School, Reform Church, Reform Church Nursery School, Adult Day Centers, Local Scouts, Birthday Parties, Upper Merlin School District, Springfield School District, Wissahickon School District, and many more. I know I'm down to my last few seconds. So um, we, we know the public wants this facility. Moving forward with this vote to add the planetarium as an alt elite will cause strife for many members of the community, students included. So to end, I would ask that you keep the, your previous commitment to include a planetarium in the new middle school. Let's work together out of commitment made rather than a threat to eliminate to fund and build the, cost, the most cost-effective facility that does not take away educational experiences from our students now or in the future. Sorry, I ran over time. My name is Stephen Starr. I live in the Ambler section of Upper Dublin. And I have two sons who were graduates of school, this high school in 1999 and 2002. And they got a wonderful education. They enjoyed going to the planetarium. I take my grandchildren to the planetarium. They enjoyed very much. I thought of being at the meeting where the initial meeting where it was discussed, oh no, no, planetarium space and the school's only going to cost seventy million dollars. I understand things change, but the planetarium shouldn't. It would be laughable that you're going to take away a valuable educational enhancement that weren't reprehensible. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Jeannie Kellogg. I grew up in Upper Dublin. I don't live here anymore, but I teach at Sandy Run Middle School, seventh grade science. Um, I just wanted to reiterate what Paul was saying about the impact this is going to have on the K-8 to curriculum. That means all those years of that backwards design out the window. That means we have to reinvent every bit of that curriculum. A great chunk of it is reinforced with planetarium, as well as Robson Park. Um, and we've already taken a little sliver out of Robson Park. Well, um, I know we have Chromebooks, but that's not where we should be going with our science curriculum. We need real world experiences. Um, STEM for girls, STEM for everybody is the norm. It feels like Upper Dublin's only mode on STEM is math. We don't worry about science, it's limited with our, you know, other pieces of this engineering and all. We need to get there. And this is a piece of our, our curriculum. And I just think we have to be realistic. I was the first seventh grade class enter three tons junior high. I don't think we want to reach past mistake. Pennywise sound foolish and build a building that we're going to be looking at that 
yeah, we cut corners to make the budget now, but we're going to be dealing with those repercussions down the line. And I don't, we don't have a backup plan now. That Sandy run when you knock down the gun. So, thank you. Good evening. My name is Vicki Lombardo. Um, I live in Willow Grove. Um, I'm sorry to change the subject, but um, I'm actually here to comment on the hire of Ken Irwin as uh, the Upper Dublin High School baseball coach. Um, I believe that Coach Irwin would be a great asset to the coaching staff. He coaches many kids, including my son, who is a ninth grader here, and wants them all to succeed, not only in baseball, but in all that they do. He tells them, I'm sorry, he tells them to give 100% in everything that they strive for and stresses how important school is. He's all about the kids. He loves to coach. I'm not sure if you're aware, but Coach Irwin gave a lot of his time this past four months going to all the baseball workouts. He was helping the kids develop as student athletes, even though he wasn't on the coaching staff. I wish I could have brought players and parents from all of his teams to this meeting tonight, but they are outside of our district, because this room would be filled with Ken Irwin supporters. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Joe Rizzo. I reside on Alba Road in Upper Dublin. I've been a resident 21 years in Upper Dublin. I want to say just a few words on behalf of the appointment of Ken Irwin as base, freshman baseball coach for Upper Dublin High School. My son Kyle has played for uh, Coach Irwin all last spring and summer. He has also worked through this winter with Coach Irwin on his workouts. I have also witnessed Coach Irwin interact with some parents, players, coaches, umpires during these times. He has, from what I have experienced, the utmost respect from all. More importantly is the interaction and respect he has from all his players. Simply put, they love him. And from what I have seen, so do his parents. He has put countless hours of personal time into taking care of fields, scheduling tournaments, and making sure parents were aware of schedules and the progress of their children on and off the field. He would be a great addition to the Upper Dublin Baseball Program, and I would urge you not to miss a great opportunity to appoint him to this position. Thank you. Does anyone else please step up? Does anyone else after the speaker please step to the back? Hi, my name is Lynn Huen. I am um, a resident. Willow Grove area of Upper Dublin, Pittswater. Uh, I have to say, um, this is my first time in any kind of this, this kind of meeting, but upon hearing um, what I've been following it through you know, sites and motives, meeting station. But, um, you know, sure. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a little bit nervous, though, as you can say. This is my first time speaking in front of home big audience. <laughs> um, so I, I consider myself as pretty reserved, so I don't really speak up that much. <laughs> but what prompts me tonight is, um, you know, I've been following, understand that uh, the planetarium is in the, the plan, right? As part of the development of run mid. And I feel like we are losing something that we have today that's pretty good. Um, my kids learn a lot through the program. So I'm just, you know, wanting to come here, kind of voice my my feedback in terms of if, if we can relook at the plan, figure out if we do keep the planetarium. Um, if we're rebuilding the whole Sandy Run Middle School and we're, we're losing a planetarium that's meaningful to the community, that's really uh, upset. So I have, thank you. Okay, thank you. Seeing no one stepping up, we will close community input. And Dr. Yanni? I'll start with the easy topics first. Um, the adolescent sleep study. Um, <laughs> I figure, I figure, you know, we'll get that one out of the way because a whole list of things to say about the planetarium. Um, the adolescent sleep uh, survey that um, 
that we are uh, going to be pushing out to students does not just look at school start times, neither will the district's focus. We're actually looking at a whole child perspective. Um, and what I mean by that, we're looking at a whole host of things, not just school start times. We're gonna do an examination of homework. We're going to be looking at our health curriculum. We're going to be looking at um, you know, screen time and how we can how we can mitigate all that. So it's not just going to be focused on um, start time. I just want to clear something up about uh, the motion for tonight, um, and we can we're not going to agree on this probably everyone in the room, but I want to explain why um, there is a motion on the agenda tonight to look at the planetarium and not some other areas of the building. The planetarium was originally located in another spot in the original plan. When that plan was looked at, the planetarium was moved from the back of the building, um, and I believe, I'm looking at Ms. Bray, I believe it was back by the music rooms, correct? When, that was mo when the planetarium was moved, it was moved into the, the heart of the building, in, uh, right outside the courtyard. The reason that the architect is requesting additional funds is not to remove the, the, the planetarium itself from the design, but there's rework that needs to be done, redrawings of mechanical and electrical systems. So I just want to explain, explain that piece. Um, the motion tonight, again, is not any type of definitive um, decision. We are hosting a community um, or a town hall meeting on the 19th of March at Sandy Run Middle School. Um, you know, I do hear concerns all the time about taxes in our district and budget in our district. And tonight people are here asking for the planetarium which I totally understand. At other meetings, I'll be asked not to, raise ta not to recommend a tax increase, to expand other programs. And I think if the decision is to keep the planetarium, if that's the ultimate decision, then respectfully what I need to hear less of is our taxes are too high. Because we can't continue doing many of the things we're doing and bring in a budget with a low, you know, with a low tax increase. When I came on board in July, I was told we were working on a $70 million project. That $70 million project turned into $72 million, and now we're at seventy-five. million. When we talk about the accountability for the project budget, I absolutely agree with, I'm not sure who said it, but they said who's accountable for the, for the, um, the project budget. You know, the accountability really needs to rely or needs to lie with the folks that the district hires to construct the budget for the project. And what's disappointing, in addition to I feel some accountability that's not there, I also feel disappointed in the fact that our township is also requiring additional road work to be done. You're all familiar with the Sandy Run site. There are two buildings there now. When we're all done with this, there will be one building there. There is going to be no increased traffic. So I'm at a loss to understand why the district is being asked to do, to do road work. So believe me, I hear everything you're saying. I don't take anything that anyone is saying lightly. Um, but there are some factors that are outside of our control. And when we talk specifically about the township, the township is the entity that gives us the building permits. So we can't just say to the township, we're not going to do the road work because then we won't get permits for the, for the project to, to continue. I'm not placing blame on the township for the folks at home that are, that are watching this. I'm just, I'm just giving you some of the, some of the um, perspective on that. The other thing, the, the question was, we were told that Sandy Run Middle School could not be made ADA compliant, and now it appears that we are making it uh, ADA compliant in a year's worth of time. Um, there's about $250,000 worth of work that is going to be done as part of the consent decree. The uh, building will not, still not meet uh, 2010 ADA standards. Um, the Americans with Disability Act came out with standards in, in 2010 that all new construction has to meet. 
the things that we're doing inside Sandy Run will not, by any stretch of the imagination, make that. So I don't want anyone to walk away saying the little bit of work we're going to be doing is making it fully ADA compliant. Um, we're, we're, we're doing things for um, a, a particular student that will benefit some other students, but it won't be, it won't be uh, totally ADA compliant. I do hear the concern about the curriculum, um, the science curriculum, and what uh, the elimination of the planetarium would mean. Um, I would also say that, I wouldn't say that all the work is, is, is thrown out the window. I would say that our elementary and middle school science is not aligned to the standards that they need to be aligned to, and so we're going to be in some curriculum work. So whether uh, we look at, or whether the board decides to vote tonight uh, to look at the planetarium and ultimately down the road uh, when when we go out to bid, whether we take that um, as a deduct alternate or not, there's, there's, there's uh, significant work that needs to be done to make sure that we're aligning to Pennsylvania eligible content. Hey, Dr. Yanni, thank you. Uh, let me turn it over to uh, board members if they would like to have some comments. Anybody? Okay, Ms. Rothman. Um, to piggyback on what uh, Dr. Yanni said about ADA compliance, um, those are the things that we're doing to the main building. Remember, there's a whole other section to our current Sandy Run Middle School, and that's the annex. Um, that in and of itself is an accessibility nightmare. And understand what we're doing to that is tearing the building down um, and putting in modular units uh, to allow for accessibility. So that's, that's part of that equation. Um, as I stated at the Operations Committee meeting on Thursday, uh, my opinion regarding uh, the planetarium is it's going to be part of the new middle school. Therefore, uh, that's, uh, I won't be voting in favor of the motion, and I, I stated that the other night. Okay. Other comments? Mr. Rowski. Another large cost is um, underground storage. Uh, stormwater uh, management facilities. We're looking, we're currently the site has zero, to my knowledge, zero stormwater management. So we will, the new site will be managing all the water that comes off all the impervious surfaces on site. And to do that, they have to put, in order to have the fields, so there's going to be stormwater, underground stormwater uh, detention basins underground to store that water. We're looking at an idea of maybe getting stormwater credits by um, perhaps installing uh, stormwater infrastructure projects on a other parts of the township, which would be, which would be cheaper if they're above ground. So if we can get those trade-offs and the township agrees to that, that may cut the cost. Not only that, I think that the neighborhoods, the neighbors would benefit if they have neighborhood flooding that now we'll be managing all of the uh, stormwater that's uh, coming off that building. I just wanted to add one more uh, thing. The good news is, uh, <laughs> I knew exactly where that laugh came from. I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even have to look out into the crowd. Um, it, it appears that our school district will take the project to bid uh, in a time that we won't be competing with other school districts. It's a relatively desirable project for uh, the contractors to bid on. Um, the only other entities that we would be in uh, competition with would be um, government facilities, municipalities, and whatnot. This overall is a relatively clean project. Therefore, we do have a good shot of going out to bid um, and have those bids come back favorably for the district. Um, the one thing I did want to mention, what, what gave everyone a little bit of pause, if you look to our Bucks County uh, neighbors in Council Rock, they recently had a uh, project, a small project that bid $1.2 million greater than what was budgeted. Um, and so, you know, we're, my, my philosophy is always you plan for the worst but hope for the best, right, so that we have some contingency plans. Um, I think when we have the opportunity to speak further and more freely at the um, town hall, we can talk about some of the some of the other areas of the building that I know have drawn uh, 
drawn some concern. The other piece that I just want to mention, um, we do we do believe that we will be uh, approved for LEED certification. And so we will net somewhere between five and $600,000, hopefully, if all goes well, to reduce the, um, the overall cost of the project. So all of those things have to be taken into account before any firm or final decisions uh, can be made. Other board members, Ms. Shapiro. Um, okay, um, certainly I hear a lot of the comments about the planetarium, and as a scientist myself, I, and, and a female, I absolutely support the science uh, program at the district, and I also want to commend Ms. Small for all the progress she's made in that area. At the same time, um, I think that the planetarium, um, some of the capability of the planetarium can be achieved by some other means, potentially things like virtual reality. Um, I'm by no means an expert, so I would like to hear more about that if possible. And if the price tag of the planetarium is something we really, really want to um, afford in, 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 instead, of, or instead of some of the other things that also are important. That's going to be the trade-off. So I think the district's plan to get some idea of or draw up this this alt, alt delete potential, I think is just prudent at this point. Um, I will certainly do my very best to make, to do what we can along with my fellow board members to keep the planetarium, but we have to make hard decisions. Um, taxes are an important issue. We hear about this all the time. Um, we, make to, may, we need to make some hard choices when the time is there and getting that information now, I think is cost effective compared to doing it down the road. I can't help myself. I cut Dr. Levinowitz off for the second time. Um, I want to be very clear, at least from my perspective tonight, none of what we're talking about in terms of the planetarium is a comment on Kim Small's ability to run the planetarium or the kids' enjoyment of the planetarium. I do think that we have um, some considerable, considerable runway between now and uh, the time we go out to bid that we can explore naming rights, not just for the planetarium, but for things like the auditorium, for things like the Ox Gym, for things like science science labs, cafeterias, libraries, those types of things. Because if we're able to um, attract some significant money, all taxpayers benefit because it would, it would reduce the overall cost of the, uh, of the project. OK. Dr. Ludwig. Uh, I agree with a lot of, thing Mrs. a lot of the things Mrs. Sherpier said, so I won't repeat those. Um, the one thing I think we haven't discussed is that the planetarium is not the only thing that, you know, is on the list for, you know, looking at if there is a budget overrun. It's just the only one that needs some extra money to do design to allow it to be one of the things. So I don't know. I mean, I think there are things with the auxiliary gym. There's some other aspects, there's already been some efforts to do cost saving in some aspects of the design in any case. But I think we have to say that this is not, all right, now the only thing that we're going to do to save cost is look at the planetarium. So, I mean, I hope that as the costs come in, we can keep everything that we have in the design, but I support Flexibility and options, so I will support it. Support the motion also. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. Oh, Ms. Francis. On a different topic, um, several members of the community came out in support of Coach Irwin, and I just wanted to say thank you. We'll be addressing his appointment as freshman baseball coach um, later in the personnel report, but thank you for coming out tonight. Okay. Uh, it's difficult, very difficult decisions that we're making. Uh, I don't want to make the decision tonight, uh, which is why I, won't, I will support the motion tonight to, uh, you know, to, to look at an alt delete of the planetarium. I think we have many months between now and when we have to make the decision in terms of what we're going to uh, accept as alt deletes. There's a long list of alt deletes that have been presented at an operations committee. 
Uh, I would think that at the uh, town hall meeting, we'll probably go through that list again. Uh, it, it's, it, it includes our second gym, which uh, I'm surprised we don't have UDJAA, 40 people from UDJAA coming maybe to the next meeting and uh, asking us to not uh, consider the uh, alt gym as, uh, as, a alt, as an alt, alt to delete. Right now, the building has two gyms. Uh, we are looking at only having one gym, which, which I, try, I find very troubling. I find very troubling not to have a planetarium. We don't know what the cost of the project is until we know what the cost of the project is. Uh, we have estimates and estimates and estimates, and they continue to try to work total project costs down. But we will not know what the project costs until when the till the bids come in and we open the bids they could come in much lower they could come in around where we hope it to be early in the process we were mentioning about approximately 70 million dollars but i think a few months after uh we, we did reach a figure of 72 million that was justified we know where that 72 was 75 is, a, is, is an, an additional $3 million that, that has now been projected. Uh, but we don't know. We don't know. The advantage of doing an alt-delete is you know how much that item would cost. So if the, the bidder comes in and says, well, the alt-delete for, for, for the planetarium is a $1 million, well, it's a $1 million that is what we would need to add that project. If they say it's $2 million, it's, it's two. We're estimating it to be approximately 1.4, 1.5 million for the planetarium. The old gym is a little bit more. So the, 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 what I see, the, the, um, the, the advantage, you wouldn't think it's an advantage, but the advantage of doing it as an alt delete is we really know what the cost is going to be. We can look very carefully in terms of what, how we can reduce the cost of the planetarium in terms of equipment. We spoke about some of the equipment that we're going to take with us. We want to make sure all that's being uh, put into the, uh, when we go out to bids, they, the, the bidders will know what we're going to bring with us into the planetarium. That could bring down the costs. So uh, there's some other questions that we didn't get to tonight regarding uh, the, the outside, the recess, the buses. We're, we're going to wait to answer those questions until the next, uh, until that town hall meeting. Uh, some of them have been have been answered at our operations committee meeting, uh, so we will wait to answer those formally. If at the end of the meeting, if you're still here, uh, you know, feel free to you know ask me if, if where we are with those things. But I wanted to move the meeting uh, on to the uh, into the legislative part, into the motion part. Um, again. We don't take, uh, we take your input very, very seriously. Uh, and, and we appreciate everyone coming out tonight and providing your very strong opinion about, about this topic. And obviously we, we will all take it into consideration and hopefully we work together to, figure, to, to determine what is best for Upper Dublin. So seeing no other comments, uh, Dr. Wait, Yanni? wait, I do want to make one more comment because I don't want something that I said uh, to be misconstrued when I talked about taxes. Um, I'm very sensitive to the uh, tax issue. I myself am a fiscal conservative. One of the things that I think is really important is that we need to make sure that we are delivering the best quality of education um, and we need to continue to build budgets that are fiscally sound and educationally sound. Um, I think the work that we did this year uh, around needs-based budgets um, speaks to that. Um, and we will continue in our, operation, or our operating budget um, to look for ways that we can do things more effectively and efficiently. Thank you, sir. Okay, we are moving now into our agenda items. We begin with the announcements and communications. Ms. Bray, are there any? There are not. Okay, minutes? Um, we have um, minutes from the various uh, committee meetings, uh, as well as minutes for a special legislative meeting on January the 14th and the regular legislative meeting that was held on January 28th. Could we have a motion and approval? Okay, can okay, motion to approve the committee meetings and the special legislative meeting and the legislative meeting on January 28th. Motion? Ms. Ms. Rothman, second? Yes. This is good. Any comments or questions on the minutes? 
we will have access to the minutes to review and provide any uh, edits or corrections as, as needed. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, moving on to the Education Committee, curriculum recommendations. Just remind the community uh, that um, most, if not all, of these items have been discussed at our Education Committee, and Dr. Ludwig will identify those that were not. Okay, for the Education Committee, uh, the first item A is uh, an information item. There are two motions. One is to approve the student activities uh, as listed. One is to approve the conferences as listed. They were all discussed at the Education Committee meeting. There are there is one additional conference uh, that is that was not on the list at the Education Committee meeting, but unless uh, I mean I moved that we approve both those items. Okay. Uh, okay. Motion was made by Dr. Ludwig and seconded by Dr. Kim. Any comments or questions? Seeing none. All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, it was just brought to my attention that there was a wonderful trip planned for Sandy Run to uh, the Louis Armstrong Museum in Queens, and that's going to have to be, uh, I think, uh, postponed until next year because of the space is not, is not open the date that we have been uh, looking at. So there will be some additional discussion about that Louis Armstrong trip that we approved previously. So uh, still being looked at to see if there's any options that we do have. Uh, moving on to the Education, uh, Education Committee Technology Recommendations, Ms. Shapiro. All right, there's a motion to approve the services with education elements in the amount of $2,250 for one year, and that is to support the PBL and launch toolkit that Dr. Yanni mentioned earlier. Second. Okay, we have first, Dr. Ludwig second. Comments or questions? I think this is going to be a wonderful opportunity. Upper Dublin, how Mr. V is very excited about this initiative, and uh, not too many districts that are given this opportunity to pursue this. And it's going to be looking at more uh, project based learning in, uh, in the middle school and, and elsewhere. Okay, so first, second, seeing no other comments, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you. Moving on to the uh, pupil services recommendations, Dr. Kim. Yes, these were not discussed in committee, but I move that we approve uh, the three uh, motions, one service agreement, one independent contract, and one education placement as listed. Okay. Second, Dr. Ludwig. Comments or questions on the three items under uh, pupil services recommendations? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Anyone opposed? Moving on to operations. Uh, see, Mr. Sirota is not here, so Dr. Ludwig. Rothman. Okie dokie. Okay, so we have, I think all of the motions were discussed at the last um, operations committee, the disposal of excess obsolete items, the lead designs, uh, the lead commissioning RFP, the change order uh, for the Fort Washington window replacement, and then the amendment that we're discussing tonight for the um, architect's fee. So I'll move those five. Motions. Well, let, let's do the last one. Uh, Thank you. Separate, I appreciate that. Thank please. you. <laughs> I'll take the first four. <laughs> okay. These are items uh, A through D under operations. Uh, we have motion is made. Is there a second? Second. Second. Dr. Kim. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, well, any comments or questions on items A, B, C, or D? Uh, all discussed uh, at the operations committee. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Moving on to item E. Dan, do you want to take this one? Yep. Oh, okay. Well, I can do it. All right. Yep. So E is the uh, proposal for the uh, amendment to the Breslin contract for the 18-5 in order to have the uh, deduct alternative bid for the planetarium. Okay. Motion made. Is there a motion? Okay, Mr. Rowski makes the motion. Is there a second? Okay, Dr. Kim, second. Comments or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Nay. Okay, okay moving, moving on to finance. Okay. Ms. Ms. Good? Yes, uh, all of the items under finance were discussed at the finance committee meeting, so I am going to make a motion, a motion that we 
pass A, B, C, D, E, and F. Second, Ms. Francis, comments or questions on the entire Finance Committee recommendations? All these items were discussed uh, at our Finance Committee meeting. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Moving on to the personnel report recommendations. So tonight we just have one item. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve our uh, monthly personnel report, including uh, the appointments of uh, the coach and um, all the other resignations, leaves, uh, and change of status within the district. Second. Second is good. Comments or questions in first now? Congratulations, coach. <laughs> Uh, seeing no comments or questions, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, moving on to policy. Ms. Rothman. Thanks. As I stated at the last legislative meeting, uh, we're going to see a, a large number uh, relative of repeals um, of the 400s and 500s. That's because we're migrating all of the employment policies into the 300s alone. Um, so, um, so I'll take all the motions together. We have uh, the second readings of 314, 331, 342, 352, 553, 7, and 4. Did I say some? 350. And then we have uh, administrative regulations tonight accompanying a number of those of uh, 353, 331, 610, 325-3. Um, the second reading repeals because we have to go through two readings for repeals of 414, 514, 431, 531, 424, 524, 430, 530, 442, 542, 550, 452, 552, 453, 553. Um, and we also have first readings tonight of 201, 334, 335, and the first reading repeal of 434, 534, 435, and 535. Okay. Second, Dr. Kim. Is that it? We're always busy over in policy. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Comments or questions? Uh, I think we have uh, an event planned before we have a vote on this. Just any comments or questions regarding the uh, session that we're planning with uh, the high school students? Thanks. Yes. Yeah, so last year, uh, the policy committee uh, invited the Student Government Association to partake in a joint policy uh, meeting um, where we discussed a number of policies with this uh, uh, directly impacting uh, SGA. That was well received, um, which was wonderful and maybe a little surprising to the adults in the room. Um, but we, uh, and based on that, um, have requested and have scheduled a, uh, another joint meeting. Um, so we have our regular policy committee meeting on March 11th. Uh, the following week, week on the 18th, we'll be having a joint meeting um, again with the students here at the high school in the forum room uh, immediately following school that day. Okay, thank you. Those were comments before we vote. Uh, we had a second. We had a first and a second. Okay, yep. Dr. Kim. Uh, no other comments or questions. All those in favor of the policy committee recommendations tonight, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Moving on to other business, Dr. Kim, can you do the calendar, please? Yeah, I have a motion to approve the following change for the school calendar for 2019-2020, the Upper Dublin High School PSAT date of October 10th, 2019, early dismissal at 1045, changed to October 16th, 2019 at 11 a.m. Second, Ms. Francis, comments or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye, anyone opposed? Okay, we are moving on to liaison committee reports. Uh, moving first to Montgomery County Intermediate Unit, Dr. Ludwig. The MCIU uh, will have its meeting, its monthly meeting, this Wednesday, February 27th. Um, and we, a, as the board, appreciates the uh, approval of the budget. Um, the budget, each school district uh, approves their portion of the budget, which is probably about one or two percent or even less of the overall MCIU budget because a big chunk of the budget is either fee-for-service or entrepreneurial services that are purchased by school districts and other IUs uh, even outside Montgomery County. 
Thank you. Moving on to the uh, legis Montgomery County Legislative Committee, Ms. Rothman. Our normal meeting that would have been scheduled last week um, is going to be a virtual Zoom meeting this Thursday due to scheduling conflict. <laughs> Zoom. Okay. Eastern Center for Arts and Technology. Again, I'd like to invite everybody to the open house for Sunday. Uh, as uh, one of the highlights of the day, our new executive director who will be assuming that position on March 18th will be available to meet uh, interested parents or administrators or uh, board members. Uh, moving on to the Excellence and Equity Steering Committee, Dr. Kim. Yeah, as was already mentioned, on February 9th, there was the Lunar New Year celebration, which was great. On uh, this past Friday, the Black History Month celebration as well, in terms of celebrating the cultures from those two equity groups. In addition, for this month, we have on March 7th, the faith-based meeting. On March 21st, the African-American Black Students and Families. And then on March 27th, the Asian-American Students and Families. And just a quick note, there are two other committees forming, the Gender Equity and Hispanic, and they are looking for more people. Relevance to the uh, gender equity, uh, a lot of their work is actually ce is centering around STEM and women uh, getting involved in those. Uh, Mr. Traley heavily involved in that process. Thank you. Ms. Ticcio, the EAC, or Educational Advisory All Committee. right. Um, the EAC is continuing to meet on their different topics. Um, they were thrilled with the attention to the sleep um, project that they, that they completed last year, and that, that is now taken up by the district. Um, their next meeting is on March 6th, and that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Moving on to uh, Pennsylvania School Boards Association. Uh, the Commonwealth is, is divided into eight sections for PSBA. Section 8, which is our section, will be having, having their sectional meeting uh, at the Upper Dublin High School on uh, March 7th. I encourage all my colleagues to attend and uh, encourage other board members to attend this, this very worthwhile event. Mostly discussions will be on uh, safe to say and also mental health issues. I think it will be a very worthwhile uh, uh, presentation, 6 to 8 o'clock. Try to be there. Moving on to PTA, PTO, Ms. Francic. Thank you. Um, we have uh, several uh, PTO, PTA meetings coming up. Uh, tomorrow evening, the Upper Dublin High School PTO meeting um, on March the 6th, Maple Glen nine, at 9.30 in the morning, and March 14th, Thomas Fitz. Uh, the Sandy Run meeting, which was supposed to be held last week due to the uh, school cancellation for the snow, um, is being rescheduled. And uh, the SPEAK Special Education Advisory Council uh, group is holding a special screening of a film called Intelligent Lives on March 13th at 7 p.m. And everyone is welcome. Township, Mr. Rofsky. Yes, our meeting was canceled or postponed. Uh, it is rescheduled for March 27th. Thank you, sir. Upper Dublin Education Foundation. Ms. Good, anything yes. going on? Yeah, well, there's a few things going on. First of all, the foundation would like to thank the district for continuing to support the North Hills after school uh, program. And uh, we appreciate that. That's a pr program that the founda foundation works very hard. Um, we meet tomorrow evening, and we're getting ready for Monte Carlo night on March 23rd. That's a great fundraiser for the foundation. Go to our website and get access to. Um, tickets for donations and we really are, encourage you to come. It's a fun night and uh, a great night for the community. Okay, one, one other event I wanted to announce since we, it's, it, we have a great audience here tonight. I know we have some, some, some of you that have graduated from Upper Dublin High School uh, on April 5th. Which is our second Upper Dublin Hall of Fame event. It will be held in, in this building. Uh, last two years ago was our first year. When you leave the build, when you leave this room today, you'll see the uh, Alumni Hall of Fame. Uh, as soon as you walk out on the wall, we'll be honoring our second class this this year. And I wouldn't be surprised if you know some of those individuals. And uh, the the public is invited. There is there is a cost to the event, but uh, some of you may be uh, interested in attending, since um, I guarantee you would know some of the uh, individuals that we're honoring in the Alumni Hall of Fame. Uh, moving on to solicitor's report. Thank you. Begin by announcing to the community that the board met in executive session today, February 25th, prior to this meeting, 
discuss one matter of litigation involving a tax assessment appeal and various matters involving personnel and, and um, other matters. Uh, as Dr. Yanni mentioned in his superintendent's report, uh, the governor uh, did release his budget proposal earlier this year. While most uh, are certainly concerned about the dollars and the cents and where they're going in the state budget, one of the other items that I thought uh, would be noteworthy to mention was the governor's proposal to reduce the uh, compulsory school age from eight years to six years, and also raising the minimum dropout age from 17 years to eight years. So um, that's certainly a proposal at this point, but something that may be developing in coming months. And in addition to uh, the proposal to reduce the uh, start age from eight years to six years, the governor is also calling for a study um, on the effectiveness of even starting school even earlier at five years uh, of age. And some are looking at that as a possible first step uh, in the state, possibly requiring implementation of kindergarten programming. Uh, Upper Dublin here already has a full day kindergarten program, and it's uh, just another uh, way in which, the, from an educational programming standpoint, uh, the district remains ahead of many other school districts across the state. Okay, thank you, Ed. Okay, we are now up to uh, legislative section, took 25 minutes. We're now up to our second community input. Uh, you could ask questions regarding any topic, and again, state your name, where you reside in the township, and four minute limit, please. My name is Mr. Lind, Roland Lind, and I'm from the upper, uh, from upper Dublin and uh, from the Fort Washington area. And uh, normally when I come to these meetings, I berate you uh, uh, on the podium for uh, uh, actions that you have taken, but I'm not gonna do that tonight. Tonight I'm going to berate you for something you didn't do. Um, Yesterday, I spent a wonderful afternoon over at Temple University listening to an organization called the Independent Symphonia. It's largely made up of school teachers in this district and in others. Two of our teachers used to be in it uh, and still participate, as far as I know, on occasions. Mr. Richard Wilhelm, who was my own uh, uh, son's uh, uh, instructor, personal and uh, teacher. Ms. Yami, who was uh, head of the uh, music department here at one time, was playing in it. It's uh, headed up by a, the first bassoonist of the Philadelphia Orchestra, who also has a, a, a um, conducting um, uh, degree from Curtis Institute and uh, does conducting in other uh, institute, uh, groups, uh, art groups around the, uh, the world. And uh, it was a wonderful uh, opportunity. Uh, years ago, when I spoke with Dr. Plattis, we approached this organization when they were looking for a place to play uh, and, in, and we offered, we, we tried to get the new performance center, which had just been built, which l largely lays dark and quiet for the whole year, to be the place where Upper Dublin's uh, school district could have a performing arts in residence orchestra of outstanding quality. Instead, the unions put on such a, uh, a, a uh, forceful way in which they said the cost would be prohibitive the unions of the, of the school district now have pushed that organization out of the, out of the um, area, and now they're doing all their work at Temple University, and one of the synagogues in the area is allowing them to use their facilities for practices, as well as a Baptist church. And, and here in Upper Dublin, we had the wonderful opportunity of having a performance art group under the Upper Dublin name and, and adding art in, uh, information and uh, wonderful performances but it's gone because of the union. So my question and my problem with this is who, who actually runs this district? The unions or those of you who are sitting on the podium tonight? If you look at the, uh, and in addition to that, you take a look at the union contract was just uh, awarded. If you, <coughs> it's at a compounded interest, it comes out to 39.4% over, over four years. If you take the amount of money, and this is the back of the envelope, I, I, I appreciate that it's not uh, uh, fully vetted, but a back of the envelope calculation would say that based on the amount of salary increase is part of that, uh, 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 of the um, total amount of money that's going into the new budget. We're looking at about 6.6% increase in taxes over four years, minimum. So again, the unions get far more, at least twice as much as the industry standard for increases over the next four years. So you're looking to, 
take away a planetarium. Well, how about taking a look at the uh, union contracts that you're signing? There's a lot more money in that than there is in the amount of money that it would take to save a planetarium. Anyway, finishing up, um, now that you have eliminated uh, the, ab the ability to have two times to, to make a, pres a presentation, why don't you increase the, uh, at least the, the one time that anybody can stand at this podium, why don't you increase it at least to five or six minutes so that a full presentation could be made? There are a few other things that I'd like to, to comment about, but uh, I see my time is up as it is so quickly. But please, if you have an opportunity, and uh, I can be engaged with that, to bring the Independent Symphonia to this school district, this, uh, our performing arts center here, which we spent millions of dollars to build, and finally have something actually happen in that, in that uh, auditorium instead of uh, dark. Jen Cousins for Washington. I just wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the planetarium and the um, construction cost, Sandy Run, that is now $5 million over budget from what we had initially discussed. Um, I'm curious how our resident engineer who does a lot of work for the township and has done a lot of work for our school district wasn't aware that we didn't have water retention basins at the middle school and why he wasn't aware of how much that cost was. So either that was already factored into his number or he was clueless about it. But either way, it seems um, like some sort of an incompetence um, that seems to be a repetitive thing. Our ADA, our trailers were almost like a million dollars over budget from what we were expecting. Now we have, you know, this road work and site work and water retention basins that are really over budget. I mean, when you add up everything, that's everything we've done so far has been the minimum was $270,000, you know, to, for the grading. I mean, it just, Either the architect and the engineer told you a number you wanted to hear, and now he's just now you're just getting the real price, and it's up to you to cut and struggle and compromise. So, I'm not sure which one it is. Did he lie to us about how much this project really would cost, or is it really just this incompetent in pricing out projects? I can't quite figure out what the right answer is. Um, as far as the alt delete list. Um, I know there's an updated one. One was presented a few months ago. I can post that up somewhere. Um, but I'm wondering where the new list is and how long it'll take to get that in order. And then, um, what else did I say? The um, meeting, the town hall meeting on March 19th, who exactly is going to be there? Will the architect be there? Are we talking... Is it all things Sandy Run? Is it just about the construction project? Is it about the outdoor limitations? I mean, I feel like that's kind of another bait and switch situation when the project was being sold to the community. No one talked about how compromised the students would be in this project. We were told that their experience wouldn't really be compromised. And so is it that we knew they were not going to be allowed outside the whole time? Or is it because of this decree that we signed? I mean, it can't be both. So I'm just wondering which one it really is, because we weren't told that this was going to happen to students at the middle school during the course of construction. Thank you. Anita Brister, Fort Washington. Um, I w first, I would just like to ask for some clarification on the limit on topics at the first community input. Do th are things that are mentioned in the superintendent's report, are those considered a presentation? So are we allowed to comment on those at the first community input? Because I think, Dr. I came a little late, but I think Dr. Yanni did comment on the outdoor activities and why would there be these restrictions at Sandy Run? But yet, Art, you jumped in at a certain point in, into the community input and said people can't talk about that. So I think maybe you need to clarify. So whatever Dr. Yanni says does not count as any kind of presentation. When he's, I mean, is it only if he's standing at the podium or whatever? I, no, I truly am confused. Because I, I thought if he mentioned it, we could comment on it at the first community input. So that's a question. 
then back to a question I had at the first community input tonight, which was not answered. Uh, actually, Kim Small gave part of the answer. She said the interior would, uh, I asked what was the cost of the total planetarium and just want to know for future reference of, you know, whether we can afford to put it back in or not. But she said the interior would probably be about 515000 Surely somebody on the board must know what the construction cost would be. So what's the total cost? And, you know, I would just appreciate it if you can't answer for some reason, then please just say that and say that you'll get back to me or whatever. But you didn't, I was probably the only one that actually asked a question at first community input and I did not get an answer. So I still want to know what's the total cost, construction and interior of that planetarium. Um, Dr. Yanni, I'm super happy to hear you're a fiscal conservative. So am I. So maybe we'll have tea sometime. <laughs> because there aren't too many fiscal conservatives. You can buy. I will buy. <laughs> and, uh, and, and in this district, you're going to have lots of opportunities to prove that you're a fiscal conservative. And I'm going to leave it at that. Bill Swan, uh, Glenside, uh, Dr. Levinowitz, members of the board, uh, Dr. Yanni. Yeah, we, we saw vendors' uh, presentations a uh, oh, year, year and a half, whatever it was back. Uh, didn't they know how much space would be needed to house construction equipment, materials, and stuff? Uh, uh, th they had estimates of uh, how big the, the buildings and the facilities would be. Uh, surely they would know, uh, you know from experience uh, how much space they would need for that. If we're really over budget on Sandy Run by $5 million because Breslin failed to understand grading, drainage, basins, roadwork, rerouting, et cetera, <clears throat> Breslin should be forced to cough it up out of their O&E insurance. And not one dime should be taken from upper Dublin taxpayers and stakeholders. If Breslin failed in their due diligence, they should be held accountable. Uh, what is the planetarium? Um, I'm going to offer an analogy. Uh, you could watch 2001 A Space Odyssey on your phone, but it would never compare to seeing it on the big screen. Likewise, watching the stars and planets on a Chromebook or on VR could never match the experience afforded by the planetarium. If the township is really at fault at suddenly trying to gouge the district for road work they should have known they wanted and didn't want to fund, they should be forced to pay for it enforced by judicial action if needed. We should take them to court. Decisions, decisions. Two gyms, no planetarium, one gym, one planetarium. Let's go back to two gyms, one planetarium, and have Breslin's insurers fund it. On any topic, uh, we got related to history and civil war. Uh, starting uh, February 28th, March 3rd, uh, the 80th anniversary of Gone with the uh, Wind is being re-released in the theaters. You go to a website, Fathom Events, F-A-T-H-O-M-E-V-E-N-T-S dot com, and uh, you'll see then a whole bunch of other uh, re-releases. Uh, some of them school-related, many of them not, but, you know, FYI. Also, a uh, new union contract, but uh, we'll be more on that later. Ed Pavlik, a drusher. I'm going to circle back on a couple of things that I picked up while we were talking. One was the budget for the school. The second is taxes. Um, starting with taxes, as a taxpayer, I never want to see taxes go up. But the fact of the matter is they do go up every year. Our car insurance goes up every year. Health insurance goes up every year. We complain about all those increases, but we accept them. And it's easier to accept an increase when we feel we're getting something back in return. The real complaint comes when prices go up and we get nothing for it. In this case, with the school and the planetarium, two gyms instead of one gym, if it was explained that their tax increase is a result of these additions, and the community was given the opportunity to decide for themselves if they want to accept the tax increase, I feel you'd be surprised at the response. To assume 
you're doing us a favor by cutting the expense to save the tax increase, I think is a disjustice to all of us and our intelligence. The second thing is the budget on the school. You talk about 70 million and 75 is over. Why can't the budget be increased? Why can't you go back to the community and tell them with the budgets increased, this is why, and it means now instead of no tax increase or 0.75% increase, it's going to be 1.5% or 2%. Why can't we do that? Come up with a firm bid for the project as we want it. Do that first. Fight the battle for the money. If you don't win, then go with alternative options for reduction. Don't reduce before you've asked. It doesn't make any sense to do a project that way. The community wants to see the school they want. We're paying for it. It's our kids. It's your kid. Let's do the right thing for them. If the community fights back and says, no, you have to stick to 70 million, then tell them what has to happen. Let them make the choice. There's no big rush. We don't, we don't have a gun to our head right now. Do it the right way. Don't assume and deduct and think you're doing us a favor because of your fear of attacking. We're going to raise taxes anyway. The question is, are we going to see something for it? And if we do, we'll feel completely different about that increase than just giving it to us every year, and we don't even know why. Thank you. Back again, Ted Fricker, Dresher, Pennsylvania. Uh, line a um, couple things that came up. I appreciate that you're a fiscal conservative as well. I do have a concern, though, that you're tying a tax increase to telling us we can't say we can't get rid of the planetarium. We were sold a budget. We were sold a good. Take something out of the budget. You can't say you're raising taxes to pay for it because it's not in the budget. Again, it comes back to where's the engineer on this? I completely agree about the stormwater base. That is something that any engineer should know would be needed in a project. There's no way they couldn't have planned for that. It should be added to the budget now. That, to me, seems very far-fetched. I have an odd question for you, too, or comment. When you mentioned the virtual reality for the, the alternative, can we mention that to the township with the library? People can use Kindles, too. I don't know if that's a big deal, but, I mean, there's tax dollars there. We can use to pay for a planetarium. Um, the two gyms to the one gym, I got to say, the UDJAA's lack of support for Field of Dreams when there's a discussion about that makes them probably not sitting here today because they already sort of didn't help taxpayers with that. Um, I still feel, I went to Sandy Run, we had one gym. The annex wasn't used at all. Not sure what, I mean, again, two gyms would be great. I think it's a, a, a bit of a luxury. We only have one planetarium in the district. We have, I, I can't count offhand, I'm thinking there's probably eight gyms in the district, maybe some in that area. Um, I do have one last question, that's sort of off base, but it came back to a question that was asked at the, SR, the Sandy Run community forum that I attended. There was some discussion about the high school referendum for the fund. When that referendum's over, where do the funds go? And I think Mr. Levin or Dr. Levin had answered that, that the lawyers were still looking at it at the time. I'm curious where we are with that, because I'd like to know where those funds are going when that referendum ends. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Larry Jacobowitz, Fort Washington. Uh, first meeting, so uh, you know, thank you for allowing us to come in. I'm um, just starting to get brought up to speed and involved in uh, some of the social media aspects about the district, right, wrong, or indifferent. Um, I've formed my own opinions about those. Um, I do have a question as to the comment made earlier. Uh, again, first meeting. Procedure in Section 5, uh, how does someone know what the topics are? In, in all honesty, and I'm being serious, I, first time here, didn't come up during Section 5 or Portion 5. Because I wasn't sure what is allowed or shouldn't should or shouldn't be talked uh, spoken about. Um, you know, should I be listening to a presentation and taking ad, ad, you know abstracts from that and bringing that up here? I just am not sure. So, with that said, um, also, and and I'll get to some of the points in a second. Um, when we're up here speaking, I, I feel it's out of courtesy and respect 
that the board members look at us, they acknowledge us, they take their heads out of their Chromebooks. Again, first meeting here, I have not seen it so much during this section, but in section five, there were countless times when people got up here. I don't know if it was because they didn't care about who was saying what or what, who was saying it, but I think as appointed members, you deserve, we deserve the respect of you to acknowledge us by looking at us and not keeping your face down in the Chromebook. Whether you're taking notes or typing, we can all multitask. We can all write shorthand and take those notes that we may be typing in. Um, finally, um, if the outside, well, if the, getting to Sandy Run, and uh, you know, if the outside of Sandy Run was part of the school's plan, you know, the board's plans to say that they're not allowed outside, then why include it in the decree? I'm curious to that. I've heard your announcement uh, this morning, your announcement here, and, and while I understand that they're announcements, I'm curious, I'm not an attorney, I'm just starting to get ramped up on uh, these aspects. I'm not sure if it was decided beforehand that this was the case. Why is it now in a legal binding document that if the plans change down the road and maybe there is a way or a reason that we can open it up so that the kids aren't trapped in the buildings or in trailers for eight hours or six, whatever the school day is, why was that included in there? I see that as a binding agreement now that we have no wiggle room to say it's hot out. Let's go outside for gym. Let's walk around on the blacktop. Let's take five minutes to just walk and maybe get some stress relief, get some clean air into your lungs and, and, and things like that. Imagine sitting in a trailer or in, in, in a school on a 95 degree day and not being able to go outside if time allows. I only have a few minutes left. Um, real quick, gym space, gym space, gym space. Again, just want to put it out there. Um, part in, somewhat involved in UDJA. Uh, as a coach, we're always jockeying for gym time, um, the lack of, the field of dreams. You know, I think a, a second gym, and I have, wasn't on the committee and new to the, the room, I think the second gym is a good idea. Um, I'm also in favor of the planetarium as well. Um, and I, I, I was shocked to hear uh, that the plan, there was a consideration for plans to pull that out and the cost of what that project would be to just investigate the options to pulling it out. Um, as well as everything else that was set up here, I just want to say I agree with fully behind all of that as well. Um, from the basins, I mean, I could have told you that, and I'm in IT. It doesn't take a rocket scientist. But I think it's been well expressed already. Uh, thank you for my time. Uh, Jenny Vitella Ambler. Um, uh, to back on to the township, a reef, and the floodplain that our new building, our 23 acres, which was another point I argued a year and a half ago on the project review committee, was we're still building a $70 million building in a flood zone. Um, the fields are bad to begin with. It's a bad lot. It's a bad location. And the fact that our engineer that we did not go bid on does not know this information is really, it, it's, it is beyond the pale. I can't even put words to it, obviously. <laughs> um, I said over and over again, I warned over and over again. You can stay, I, I think I even argued with a board member or two that might not be here anymore. Um, to, in order to stay on budget, right, we're, what are we going to lose? I was promised and told over and over again, we stayed on budget for this high school, $120 million. We were on budget, we were on budget. And I kept saying, but what do we lose? What did we not get? I, that question was never answered. We had to do a um, right to know request. We had to get boxes out of a basement. We had two hours to look at them, one person. And lo and behold, one of the big things that was missing that we saved on was the bus depot. We had to find that ourselves. We've been paying for that for 10 years. We were threatened to lose the field of dreams. The township was willing to work with us then. It's interesting. Um, maybe they're angry with that, and so they're messing with the price on the other thing. Who knows? I just think we really need to work hard to get this stuff together. I also know that we're $75 million, $5 million over budget. Does a reef with his 4% fee get that 4% on that over budget number? I'm curious. Um, <clears throat> the alt elite for the gym has always been an alt elite. We were sold, we were told that it was there because of this and that and the other thing. We'll get it by the price and blah, 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 blah. Um, but I, 
get a sense there was a reason why Upper Dublin Junior Athletic Association was saying we could make do without a field of dreams because what they can't make do with is one less gym for all the people that participate. And I think at the time also my children participate in 15 different Upper Dublin youth sports. Um, I'm in a lot of these spaces. I know what the scheduling looks like. I know how late they are. I think my kids just left swimming actually. Um, and back to my community input back on Thursday that was not answered. Outside activities and other activities with this decree. What are we going to do about Spirit Day, Turkey Trot, Field Trips, Robbins Park, Camp America, Sixth Grade Stomp? Are they compromised in any way? When will that be communicated with the parents? And when will they have a say? When will we have a logistic, logistics laid out? Kids missed ball games last year because a bus came that fit. It was a little bus that didn't fit everybody on it. And they missed ball games. We had to cancel. Um, we're already moving. You, it was mentioned that we already take tennis team over to Aiden Lair. True. But we don't take field hockey. We don't take girls soft, soccer. or We don't take baseball. We don't take softball. Two baseball teams, two softball teams. We don't take football. Now we're taking all those kids. So I want to make sure, I want to find out when we're finding out what all these activities, if we're going to lose them, because I'm hearing that we might lose some activities. And I want everyone to know, I'm quoting somebody who said this before, ADA is to increase and provide opportunities for individuals with disabilities so that they are not discriminated against. ADA is not to decrease and take away opportunities with, for those without disabilities. Thank you. Tim Small Drescher, um, obviously the first time I came up here, I was very prepared and had a, a statement. Um, this time it's more, I guess, reaction to what happened tonight and um, my feelings as an employee for the district as well as a parent for the district. Um, so I feel a little bit as an employee that I literally am living in a year ago, um, conversations with the Ed Foundation about funding, uh, naming rights for the Dome literally happened a year ago. Uh, talks about VR versus the planetarium happened a year ago. Um, so I just don't really understand why we already had all these conversations and now we've made this decision tonight and with the idea that we're going to have them again. Um, I'm happy to hear that Dr. Yanni is interested in exploring them. I actually have a meeting with him this week uh, where we're going to be talking about some of this, so that is very promising. Um, I do believe we could fund it if it's looking at like a million dollars. I do believe the funding is out there. Um, so, you know, if nothing else, and hopefully if the board allows me to, which I tried to a year ago, like I would be happy to be that thermometer that we have to reach and lead that um, goal for this district so we can still have a planetarium. Um, as far as a parent, this is the first time I can say in this district that I've been disappointed uh, with a decision that seems like it has gone backwards on what this board had originally promised. Um, and as a parent who also sits in a building where I hear students all day today walking by the planetarium saying, oh my god, I can't believe that's going to be cut. There's a Padlet site out there um, that I was asked to start by Dr. Wheeler about a year ago to see if what kind of support there was in the district. Um, not financial support, but uh, like statements of um, testimonials. And there's like over 125 um, student, parent, uh, teacher uh, testimonials on that page. And today it started popping up again. I didn't initiate that. I don't know if somebody remembered about it from nine months ago and it's starting to populate again. I think I've shared that with the board before. Um, so the last thing I just want to say is I want to work with you. I want to make this happen. Um, I want to be a part of it in every way possible. Uh, I've invited all of you many times to come to the planetarium. Come talk to me about what the curriculum looks like. Come to a night event. All of that still stands so you can see exactly what it is that would be missing for the district if we were to eliminate it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Veronica Lambert, and I have a daughter, second grader at Fort Washington Elementary. Um, I would like to thank um, Small for running the program. And I'll start off with the story that, that we experienced when we first moved here. And I shared it, I think, when this became an issue of about the planetarium and constructing the middle school. Um, and it's one of our first experiences in the district was going to her program where as a, with my daughter as a kindergartner, 
looking up into the planetarium and seeing Orion's belt. And from that night on, every time we're in the sky or in the dark, we look into the sky and we look for those stars. And it could be anywhere around the world. And then it leads to a discussion. Why are the stars, you know, above the house in Fort Washington and like in a totally different place across uh, in Europe? Um, and I feel like that's, that's the foundation of science for these little, for these little children, um, an interest in, in, um, in the world. Um, and I'll say also, I, I really don't like coming up and speaking in public. You can probably hear it and sense it, um, but I feel like it's important for me to do this, for everyone to do this. Otherwise, you won't know um, our perspective. And I, this is just a small group of people that value the planetarium. Um, I came tonight out of concern because I only learned about the possibility of it not being included in, in the new middle school yesterday um, and was astounded. I couldn't believe it. And it made me feel like, you know, I had lost this sense of trust of what was promised to us a year ago. And I, I remember distinctly asking Mr. Sirota, um, is it in the budget and is it going to be included? And you guys, yes, it is. Now, and I'd be curious to hear what his, his opinion is um, and how, how he wants to vote. I know you haven't voted against the planetarium, but I feel like this motion to have a new design without it is going, you know, in a direction that a lot of us don't agree with. Um, and I'll just end with another story, and that's going to the Czech Republic. So my family is originally from the Czech Republic, and I try to take my daughter there every summer, and especially to catch the tail end of their education program. So it's the last two weeks of June. And we go into the village, um, very small elementary school. And she attends that school with the other children, um, you know, struggles with their language. And what I'm astounded by is that how much they value uh, field trips. They go to the hands-on farms that they can. And one of the field trips they attended was uh, getting on a bus, public bus, traveling an hour and a half, to the planetarium in Prague. And it shows that they value this type of education, this type of learning, and I can't believe that we have it. We have it right here, and we're taking it away, or we might take that away, where people that don't have this type of thing travel long distances just to have access to it for a short period of time. It's part of our curriculum. We're so fortunate, <laughs> and we're about to possibly get rid of it. Thank you. Hi, Brandy Greiner Ambler. Um, I was on coming up here. Um, but I have two questions, thoughts. Um, the first one is in regard to the physical education curriculum at Sandy Run. Um, I have an eighth grader currently and a fifth grader who will be up there next year. Um, with not having the outdoor space, um, I know as one of the curriculum things is running the mile, um, how that will be impacted. Um, and how we will compensate for having 75 to 100 children um, in that gym right now um, for an entire year. So you're talking about when it's whatever, 98 degrees outside and you have 75 to 100 um, kids in the gym at one time. Um, my second question, um, going up to Ginny, or backing up to Ginny's, um, just the transportation. Um, I know there are sports transportation issues now in the district. Um, I know that timing is difficult. Um, actually, today I called the transportation office because there was a smell of gas on my son's bus from Sandy Run, and I requested that there not be Fort Washington kids put on the bus. Um, I was told, and I did follow up with Robin, um, he was unavailable, was told that they had to put the children on the bus. They didn't have another bus to use um, in that short amount of time. Um, so I just don't know how you're going to get, as Jenny said, kids to softball and baseball and lacrosse and tennis um, at the same time when we can't get all of our students from the high school to where they need to be unless we pull them out early. 
So before they used to leave at just say two o'clock for an away game. Now they're leaving at like 1.30 or something. Um, so they're losing education time now. Um, so I don't know how that'll impact Sandy Run students. Hi, I'm Tom Kivalan, I'm from Dresher. Um, I just like some clarity from Dr. Gianni. Earlier you mentioned um, that the adjustment of the plan, it didn't sound like it was to eliminate. Most tonight's motion was to adjust, um, and that was moving it from one section of the building to the center uh, for the planetarium. So some clarity on, on are we voting on, you know, was tonight's motion to move it and look at the plan for that, or was it to actually look at what the plan for the building would look like if it was completely eliminated. Um, secondly, you know, why is it $18,000 to adjust a plan? It, it seems like that would be some work done on a computer. Um, you know, I realize it's a big complicated building with plumbing and there's probably all sorts of layers to that plan, but it just seems like an awful lot of Julia Watt, Fort Washington. Um, so many great points brought up here tonight. I hope we get some great answers. Um, I also want to just, the planetarium, um, I'm a speech and language therapist. Language and communication is so important. Um, I see kids with so many expressive language delays these days. They're not able to process language. I think um, putting in something like a virtual reality in replacement of something where you're sitting down and socially engaging with the kid next to you um, is not going to be a replacement for it, the feel of what a planetarium could give. Um, I think we need to be really careful with, with that kind of thing. Also, the field trips. Um, I know years ago, Robbins Park was decreased because of busting expenses. So now our kids in elementary school, I mean, I, I think we all speak about this, how excited they are on their days they get to go to the planetarium. So again, this is going to be impacting these little ones who get to have these great field trips to expand on their science curriculum. Um, also want to say I'm a UDJA basketball coach, have been coaching for four, three years. Um, we practice at Sandy Run. That gym is utilized. The, the annex gym is utilized all the time. Um, we play our games at Thomas Fitz at fourth and fifth grade students, and the gyms are so tight and so small. Um, we can't really even swing the basketball around. We always have to set up our plays. So we need this gym space. And, you know, sports is just so important as well as the science curriculum is. We're Upper Dublin. I mean, we are in Montgomery County, outside of Philadelphia. Our taxes are so high. I mean, this is such a gem of a district. We moved here 10 years ago. That's why so many people move here. Um, I grew up in Philly, out to North Wales, always drove the 309, saw the UD Cardinals. And knew, like, compared this to the main line in terms of district. This was a place to be. So I just, I'm so upset as how we're building this brand new building, but yet here we are already taking away things that we have in an existing building. And yes, while the annex is not ADA compliant, there could have been some remodeling in terms of remodeling the existing middle school building, which is pretty cute. Pretty cool, I guess, not cute, but with the library the way it is. I mean, there's some really great foundations with that existing building. I, you know, I, I know we all discuss this. Um, I don't know, you know, I know we may be past this point, but, um, you know, it just, I think doing our due diligence in terms of that is um, important. So some of those answers, as well as, again, the same thing, just how, how are these buses going to be situated, going back and forth, um, you know, all the extra expense, um, the, just, the amount of time the kids are not outside. So, thank you. Okay, we will close community input. Dr. Yanni, do you want to begin? There are no easy ones to start with this time, so I'll just dive in. Um, the question about uh, what the motion exactly was for tonight, um, if I misspoke earlier, I want to clarify. The planetarium was moved months ago from one section of the building um, to another. So the motion tonight was to have the architect, Breslin, uh, redesign uh, the mechanical and engineering systems of the building without the planetarium located um, in there. Um, some of the other questions, things like trips to Robbins Park, uh, things like field day, spirit day, um, 
turkey trot, all of those things will still take place. They'll take place at an alternate site. Um, they're, yes, yes. So um, one of the things just in, in um, the press release that the board uh, sent out, uh, I guess now about a week ago, field trips and whatnot will not be impacted um, by the consent decree. So um, I will be asking the middle school administration to reach out to the middle school community to just reiterate um, those types of uh, those types of points. Um, in terms of transportation, um, I will uh, work with Mr. Uh, Robbins. We'll ask him to also be at the town hall and also prepare some answers to the questions uh, that have been posed here tonight about what that will look like with um, you know busing teams and and whatnot. Um, you know, one of the things that I uh, we're already doing with the middle school administration is looking at those special events and when those special events are taking place and how we can and where we can secure spaces um, in other ways. Um, as to the question of why it costs uh, over $18,000 to redraw uh, plans, I, um, I don't have a specific answer to that, um, but, we can, but we can bring that answer back. According to the architect in chief here, he said there's there are there are twenty nine documents that need to be that need to be um, changed and altered. Okay. Um, any other board members would like to respond to me? any questions? Okay. Wait, there was one more question yes, that was asked that wasn't um, answered, and that is the cost of the planetarium, including uh, construction cost. What? Oh, you did? I'm sorry. It's somewhere between 1.5 and 1.7 when you look at the total cost of um, the construction, the labor, and uh, outfitting the space. Um, again, we'll have that uh, number. We'll discuss that again at the town hall. Um, and as uh, Ms. Small said, we are meeting later this week. Leave day after tomorrow, day after tomorrow, to look, um, to look at some options we have for, for naming rights, some significant, some significant donation. Ms. Rothman? Mr. Jacobowitz asked about knowing the topics a lot, what to say. So there is an agenda published online, um, so you can see that it's, it's what's on the agenda, and then as you come in, it's that document there. So um, the topics that are listed in the agenda, like for instance, the planetarium tonight um, was a motion, so therefore it was a topic to be discussed in uh, the first as well as the second input tonight. It, if you see it on the agenda, it's here to talk about at, at tonight's meeting or at a legislative meeting. The yeah. superintendent's is not an agenda item, nor is it a presentation. Correct. Okay, let, let me clarify with the solicitor. My understanding is the policy is written is um, it is agenda items, which are, or action items. So they're, they're items that the board is voting on and presentations. Presentations is a specific item on the agenda. On tonight's agenda, it's item number four. So that would be presentations. So correct. Same would be true of any of the other introductions that take place. It would be the items listed under number four and then any items that the board is voting on. Ms. Rothman, when we developed the policy, how did we look at superintendent's report? Or, I'm not sure. Or, I mean, or we, Dr. Kim? Yeah. We discussed More. different things, and we can discuss it again in yeah. policy meetings. I mean, it was, right. I am happy to drop my superintendent's report into some Google Slides moving forward, and then it will be a presentation. It will be a presentation. I think Mr. Fricker also asked about uh, the high school referendum money. Um, about what happened to that. It's my understanding that the referendum money has been spent. Uh, that was something that um, we're done with that bond. Am I correct, Ms. Bray?
we're <clears throat> we are still paying off the high school and will be until I think 2030 31 so the, um, the debt is still there not any um, bond money well, as in proceeds that have been unspent uh, I think the real question is what happens as the funds the debt drops off we are working with our uh, attorneys now we are getting closer <laughs> we are trying to get help from PDE and other to, to help clarify how this is done. Uh, the statement is the, the debt does drop off, but what amount gets dropped off, how does it get dropped off, those are all still being looked at. One of the things is that Upper Dublin is the first district to have right. done a referendum. And so, so we're PDE, the first ones that, are, that it will be done. Right? So we're working with the government essentially to help guidance with that because you know they don't have yet yeah, nobody knows exactly yet so we're trying to work with them to get an, an exact amount I'm also working with a superintendent of the state college area school district they also did a front-end referendum um, and they are um, because front-end render re referendums um, are not common the guidance from PDE that we need I have to tell you working uh, with anyone at the Department of Education is uh, a very slow and arduous process, uh, but we are working through that, and I would hope um, that we'll be able to give a more concrete answer. We will be able to give a uh, more concrete answer at our next legislative meeting. But the good news is there is a drop off, significant amount of debt that will drop off in the schedule when it, and we're still looking for. We can't decide how it gets, how it, what happens when it drops off, but we know it drops off, and we know. So we're working on, as Dr. Yana indicated. That's a great question. And that's that exact, and the impact on the taxpayers, exactly. Yeah. Any other comments from from the board? Sure. I would just like, if I again, if I misspoke, um, when I was speaking about tax increases earlier, if 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 I inadvertently made the link between a tax increase and the project budget, please know that that those those two things are not, um, you know, innately connected. So I apologize if I if I drew too tightly of a of a connection there. Let me try to respond to some of the questions from from Mr. Pavlik too about taxes. There is the option. There is the option uh, of of the project costing more. We won't know what the project will cost until, as I said, we know what the project will cost. Earlier tonight, I know I said the cost of the planetarium was approximately 1.4, 1.5. We won't know once until we see the alt delete, then we'll know the cost of the project, of, of the planetarium. Uh, let me just respond to some other questions. Uh, I'm not clear with Mr. Lynn's statement about uh, the independent symphonia that did use our facility that I know those individuals very well. Uh, it's gone because of the unions. I'm not sure what that really means. Uh, Mr. Lynn indicated that our performing arts center is dark and quiet. It is anything but dark and quiet. Uh, if you drive by that place on any weekend, it is being rented out. We have specific fees for, uh, for the rental of a performing arts center. Uh, it is always being used. It is not dark and quiet. Uh, there's documentation that you can request if you wish on a right to know in terms of uh, uh, the usage of the, of, of the performing arts center. Ms. Bray? Yes, and we also have the fees that are stated in board policy. Right. I'd have to look at that. Um, and the fees do vary depending upon the organization that wants to um, use it. And as far as, and if I could speak to union, um, there are custodial costs that are uh, need to be supported by organizations that use um, various parts of the high school. And those rates are also, I believe, in the document. And a uh, question about the, the current fields at, at the middle school. There, uh, the, two base, the baseball and the softball field will be totally redone. They will be new fields. They will be redone. Uh, we will work on the mile run is another event that I'm sure we'll be looking at because it is a state, I believe it's a state requirement. Uh, 
And that's all the items that I would like to address. There was there was one other question about the town hall. Who will be at the town hall? Um, it's an it's an evening that all board members can attend. So I anticipate the majority of the board, if not all nine board members. Yeah, we, we can't respond to questions like that. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay, any other final comments from either the board or the superintendent? Okay, uh, in, in the agenda lists all of the future meetings. Our next legislative meeting is the end of March, March 25th. Prior to that, we have all of our committee meetings. Seeing no other business, is there a motion to adjourn? Ms. Good, second? Dr. Kim, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight.